So I will call the meeting to order at seven and I will just move right into uh, into um, talking about the, the 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 video meeting rules. So this is a web based call. We've been doing this for a while and we're operating under the following procedures. This session is being audio recorded. Um, just like every other planning and zoning commission meeting, it's also being video recorded. Um, to ensure sound quality, um, please put yourself on mute unless you're speaking. Um, members of the public, when you are allowed to speak, and um, there will be two occasions in this meeting that you will be, um, we ask that you obviously turn your, your, your speakers and your audio on and then also your video on if that's available to you. Um, the commission members will generally keep their video on, um, but again, remain on mute um, as much as possible, especially if we start to get some feedback. Um, uh, this is a this is a public meeting, um, and we'll we'll we will all be speaking. So I would ask that everybody um, pay attention to what others are saying. Let every, let others have their say. We'll all get a chance to say what we want. Um, we'll try not to talk over each other. Um, and if we get to that point where we're talking over each other, I'll uh, I'll raise my hand and ever ask everybody to be quiet for a moment. Um, and uh, during the public hearings, all the normal rules including stating and now spelling your name apply. Um, so every time a, member's up, a member of the public wants to speak, uh, please say and um, spell your name. Um, with that being said, um, I will um, move into the roll call. We do have, um, we do have again, a quorum. Um, Karen is with us now. Um, so it's uh, myself and Adam and Alice and Wes and Daryl and Karen. I thought I saw David, but uh, yeah, maybe he'll come back. Um, but as it stands now, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could um, elevate uh, an alternate voting status um, as necessary. Um, so the reading and approval of the minutes. Uh, we've got the uh, the minutes of July 10, 2021. And that's actually July 8, my mistake. Okay. And not the 10. Fine. So that's the first, uh, that's the first um, correction that we'll make. Right. And then um, just to go back to last month's, you had asked me to check what the uh, starting times were of the regular meeting of June 10th and the special meeting of 20, June 24th. Um, and those meetings did open at 7.01 p.m. That was something that was missing off of those minutes. So you asked me to check on those. Um, and then also in the first sentence under the call to order of the June 10th meeting, it should read Mr. Winter, Mr. Winter called the regular meeting to order. So those are just a couple of changes that I'd like to make to those two minutes. And I don't think you need to motion or anything. It was just something that you had asked me to check into as um, from the last meeting. And they have been uh, they they have been corrected um, in the record. Well, they'll be corrected because they'll be part of this meeting's minutes, so okay. that you know you'll you'll just have to read. You know, like you can't go back and change those minutes physically. You make those changes based on the next meeting's minutes. Fine. Okay. Great. Um, so then is there any discussion or it's, uh, it's like a motion to um, to accept the minutes as amended for the well, July? 8th, but then Ann McAndrew had sent in, did you get her email, Matt? I did, I did. Let's have a, uh, let's have a motion and then we, then we can have a discussion. Okay. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of the regular meeting minutes of 7, 10, 21. Second. Great, thanks. So, okay, now Donna, so Ann, Ann's comment had to do with uh, the, the notes from 6A1. Right. Um, and I went back and I did listen to the meeting again. Um, and um, I just shortened it to be a no. It wasn't a hard no, 
It was that they would like to do it, but they understand that the community barn could not be commercial um, and they would not like to be in competition to any of the other galleries. So I don't, I didn't see that as a yes, which is what Anne was thinking, but it wasn't a hard no either. So. So in order to make the minutes completely accurate in light of Anne's um, comment, would you add a, a, a sentence? Would you recommend adding a sentence to, to change it, to, to say what you just reported? Right, well, I've already started to do the minutes for this meeting. So I'm including that paragraph in these minutes for tonight, explaining what I heard um, on the recording from the last month's meeting. Fine, fine. Um, I also had, uh, I also had a, I, I had a question regarding um, the road um, and the public versus private status um, of the proposed road. I remembered it a little bit differently, but I think that um, we can let these minutes stand and I will ask that question of the applicant and Mr. Zemanski when we get there. Um, because I, I remember, I remember that conversation. I don't remember the conversation exactly. I don't remember that it was going to be a public road. Um, so I have some questions about that. Is that a reasonable way to, to, to manage that, uh, concern? Yeah, I think probably changing it from a public to town would probably correct that because it will be a town road. It's as opposed to a private road. So that's what you remember. That's that's what they decided. I wanted to get input from the applicant, but if it, you're you're certain that uh, that they there, it's going to be a, a town road. Yeah, we can we can have Paul or um, Andrew <clears throat> verify that if you'd like. If you yeah, I'll, if you I'll clarify that. during the meeting as part of this one because <clears throat> we met with DPW since then. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, I also just have a couple of quick. Uh, um, typographical um, comments on page four, the second second paragraph from the bottom, um, second line towards the end, Mr. Bacon replied that the did not look at the configuration. I think you mean they. And on the top of page six, um, the first paragraph in 7A, the last line, um uh commission said that she would like i think her commission to be included okay any further discussion from the uh, balance of the commission i have a question because i was unclear on are we going to correct <laughs> the meeting minutes of last month having to do with the comment that um, that Anne made, or so we're going to go back and we're going to correct those minutes as as Donna had said. Is that correct? Yeah, well, we'll correct them in this month's minutes. So you don't, you never go back into what's there previously. You can't go back and change what you've already filed. You adjust in the next month's meeting. So we're correcting those minutes now. So the corrections will stand in this month's minutes. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. One day when somebody goes back to meeting minutes and they read meeting minutes that that we are that are written now and that we're making corrections to whether they're corrections about grammar and, and punctuation or they're corrections about the content of the meeting and that we make corrections to that in in our meeting today, having to do with last month, when somebody reads the meetings, the, the meeting minutes next year, two years from now, three years from now, from from eight, from seven, ten, how do they know that there was a correction made? I I always thought when we when we decide that that we accept minutes with certain revisions, that those revisions are made to the minutes to reflect the correction. Otherwise, how does anybody ever know going forward that there was a correction made? Because if you look at the bottom of the minutes, it specifically says that these are draft minutes and that corrections may be made by the commission at the subsequent meeting. 
So okay. if you're going to be looking at a specific topic, you're going to keep reading those minutes until that topic has been exhausted, or you really should go to the next month's meeting to see if there were any corrections. So that's stated on the bottom of every every minute packet of minutes that I file. Okay, I'm good with that. I, I just, I didn't, it's never really came up like this before in all these years. So I, I, ne I never knew that the corrections were never made in the past minutes before. Okay. Yep. So thank you. So You're I'm gonna amend, I'll amend my, my motion to um, to include all the various corrections that we said we were going to make. So also, Adam, you should amend uh, the date. It's July eight, not July ten, as your motion said. Um, right. It was it was July tenth, and um, I think we said that the July eight. Oh, it's July eight. It was the meeting. Okay, it was July eighth. I thought. I thought the mistake was that it was written as the tenth. It's written as the tenth, but it's supposed to be July eighth. Okay. Right. Correct. Um, Daryl, are you okay with uh, with the amended motion? I am. I second that. Resecond it. Great. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on the on the July eighth um, minutes? Then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and are saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Great. Um, and while we have, um, while, while there's a little lull, David, I'm going to elevate you to voting status. Okay, great. Um, all right. So then the next agenda item is the, uh, the, the special meeting minutes of uh, July 27th. And I would look for a motion regarding those minutes. Well, I'll make a motion that we accept the special meeting minutes of um, of A12. July 22nd. July 22nd. Uh, it's just what it said at the Seven. top of my page. I'm sorry. I'll second, second. the motion. Great. Um, and any discussion? And all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And motion carries. Great, thanks everybody. Um, and so agenda item number four is the public communication oral. Is there anybody um, who has joined us this evening um, who does not have, who has business in front of the commission who is not on the agenda? Uh, there are two members uh, in attendance uh, representing Ken Affordable Housing and, and that is Hal Cam and myself, Greg Sheridan. And for one reason or another, I don't understand why either of us uh, are not pictured on the screen. So uh, apologizing in advance and not being particularly tech savvy, if anyone can help either of us in that regard, it would be appreciated. Um, the, only, the only advice I can offer, Greg, is on the bottom left of your screen, there should be an icon, um, a, a microphone icon. And to the right of that, there should be a, uh, a camera, a video camera icon. Yeah, there's a start video. Click on um, that. And if that works, then that's great. That's that's otherwise I, I can't help. All right. Hey, there, you are. there you are. All right. Um, so yes, there there are a couple of different uh, there are a couple of different agenda items where we will discuss um, uh, the kind of affordable housing and then the um, the letter that was written by I think um, Greg, you were one of the authors. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Then, uh, then, then we'll talk about that, and I believe it's agenda item in the in the in the nines. So, uh, um, I, with unless there's any objection, I would like to go to agenda item five A, which is uh, application numbers fifty two dash twenty one SP and fifty three dash twenty one C. Paul Zamansky, PE, Arthur H. Howland Associates for North Main Street LLC. <laughs> Zero North Main Street, Map 3, Block 15, Lot 5, Proposed Conservation Development of 13 Lots. And I would then, seeing no objections, um, uh, reopen the public hearing. Um, Donna, is there anything that, uh, that we should, that you would like to add 
um, before we read the, uh, the letters into the into the minutes? Yes. Um, it is not North Main Street LLC. It is North Main Kent LLC. Um, so I'd like to make that change just for the record. Okay. Um, and I did, um, I don't know, we could, probably, we could either do this now or we could do it later, but um, originally um, when uh, COVID came in, um, uh, one of the executive orders gave the, uh, the commission an additional 90 days to act on applications. Well, as of July 21st, that has gone away. And so now we're back to the regular 65, 35, 60, 35, 65, 35, um, which is the timing. So tonight would have been the night that you would have had to have made a decision. Actually, tonight is the 35th night. So um, we do have a letter um, from Mr. Zamansky as a representative from North Main Kent LLC to request an extension to the next regular meeting of September 9th of 2021. I just want to put that in for the record. That, um, okay, I got it. Um, we, we should maybe as a commission not accept that letter until we see how the conversation goes tonight. Sure. Um, but uh, um, I would, I think, start out by reading these, uh, these three letters um, and I will read um, the first one, and if I could have volunteers for the other two, that would be great. So there are, there are one letters from, uh, from Kent Affordable Housing. The other letter is from the neighbors, um, Wasti, and the other letter is from the neighbors, um, Ewer. So um, this is from Kent Affordable Housing um, to Angela Bacon, Andrew Bacon, and Eric Teets. And Angela and Aaron, uh, Andrew and and. and Angelica, am I saying your last name right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. All right, fine. It was with great interest that we watched your North Main Street proposal before the Kent Planning and Zoning Commission on July 8th. Following its, its discussion of your proposal, the Board of Kent Affordable Housing authorized us to reach out to you to see if you would consider including some affordable housing in your project. We agree that the plans and drawings and your presentation are sensitive to the characters the character of our town and the village. We applaud the representative interior and exterior styling of the homes, their measured size and the sensitive treating on the exquisite land. If approved and constructed as proposed, it will enhance our community in a number of ways. A new subdivision with 13 homes is a huge event for Kent and its future. It will lay down the, a new marker for development as Kent's first subdivision in two decades. Over the same period of time, Kent Affordable Housing has created its 38 affordable homes in Kent, most of them apartments and all like your proposal within walking distance of the village center. We would be gratified to do a walkthrough of South Common and Stewart Farm at a time that is convenient for you. Kent's rich history is one of a diverse mix of economic levels and its future with work can retain such a mix. The commission has backed affordable housing since 2001 and the townspeople of Kent have embraced quality affordable housing. We encourage you as developers and the commission to explore how your new development can contain some affordable housing, homes for sale that will be the market rate homes you plan to market. Think for example of a local family of moderate income and good credit that could qualify for a mortgage of $175,000. Think of homes, maybe a dwelling or two, dwelling for two owner families that would be affordable for its first owners and remain affordable by binding and recorded deed to new owners 20 years out. Uh, we but open the discussion here. Planning and zoning has recent experience with encouraging a housing mix to include 20% affordable housing in its recently created Kent Village Housing Overlay District. Inclusionary zoning found in 8-2I of the Connecticut General Statutes permits PNZ commissions to promote the development of affordable housing as part of granting a special permit. We will be at the PNZ meeting on August 11, um, sick. We look forward to meeting you and can be reached through Sheridan Express at gmail.com. And it's signed uh, Greg Sheridan, Hal Cam, and Bill Backrack, and um, copied to um, Paul Zemanski and, um, and the Kent Planning and Zoning Commission. 
Um, and the second one then is uh, uh, from Joanne Wasty. Um, somebody want to read that for me? I can read it, probably. Thanks, Adam. Um, address to Donna Hayes, Land Use Administrator, Kent Planning and Zoning Commission. Dear Mrs. Hayes, I would like, I would ask that this letter be read into the record for the meeting on August 12th, 2021. My name is Joanne Wasty, and I live with my husband at 120 North Main Street across the street from the proposed subdevelopment on North Main Street. Despite our Despite our sadness at losing a gorgeous view, we were pleased to see the proposed building plan is progressive in design and sensitive to the existing landscape. That being said, I have several requests and concerns. One, I hope the developers are planning to do modular construction of site, off-site. This is a better alternative to traditional construction it is more efficient, healthier for the environment, and would limit the duration of noise and disruption to the neighborhood. Two, I understand there will be a space left for a wildlife path behind the development, but animals also cross Route 7 from the wetlands into the open field. With houses and a barn built along Route 7, the pathway going from east to west will be eliminated. If the four houses on the south side of the plan were moved towards the cluster of homes, this would allow a route for wildlife coming across Route 7. Will Kent be doing an environmental assessment? Three, it is difficult to assess from the plans where trees will be planted, but I would ask that native trees and shrubs be planted along Route 7 at the south side of the lot to obscure the view of the houses. Four, since, the develop, since this development will be essentially extend the downtown area of Kent, the speed limit should be reduced in this area and the speed limit sign moved further north on Route 7 beyond the subdivision. Five, we, live, we lived in a planned community with shared communal space and a restrictive covenant for many years. It was wonderful, especially for our families with young children. The covenant was essential in allowing the board to legally ensure the architecture, despite the addition of modern amenities, stayed the same as when it was built in 1927. Will there be a restrictive covenant, a homeowners association or both, and will that res be restricted concerning architecture and land use. It is in the best interest of all to ensure that, the, that this development is a success. And I think it could bring new vitality to Kent if done with sensitivity to the environment and the town. Signed best, Joanne Wasty, 120 North Main Street, Kent, Connecticut 06757. Thanks, Adam. And then the, and then the third letter um, submitted by Dorothy and David Ewer. You want me to read it, Matt? That would be great, Alice. Yes, please. Uh, to Ms. Donna Hayes, Land Use Administrator. Dear Ms. Hayes, thank you for letting us submit this letter to be read at the August 12th Planning and Zoning meeting and subsequently including it in the record. As the Northern Gateway to the Village of Kent, the proposed buildings and requisite infrastructure demands of the property referred to as North Main LLP are of significance to the fabric of the town. To that end, we have points for discussion. Number one, the first two houses, lots numbers one and 13 are unnecessarily close to the property line to the south as there is a corridor that runs east-west in this exact location, frequented by wildlife crossing over to the wetlands on the other side of Route 7. If these houses are pushed to the north, that corridor can remain available. As the plan stands now, there is no east-west path for wildlife. In addition, putting these houses on top of the existing property line to the south benefits no one and challenges the rural feel of the, feel of the existing neighborhood. Number two, the open space currently noted in the drawings to the west of the property is a north-south corridor 
that the local wildlife takes advantage of. This existing open space corridor is contiguous to the open space on the northern and southern properties. We respectively submit that keeping the houses where they are versus moving them west would preserve the fluidity of this well-utilized open space. Number three, the designs and sizes of the houses as drawn are in keeping with the feel of the town. We recognize that as a conversation conservation subdivision, there is ample room for the number of houses planned and more. But we would be remiss if we didn't inquire if fewer structures wouldn't be more advantageous for the soon to be residents, the town and the environment. One of the reasons that Kent is consistently listed as a top New England des destination is its historic feel and its open space. The allure of the area with these new houses and their barn-like feel would be enhanced by fewer structures and more open space. Number four, we appreciate the planting of 43 mature trees to protect the neighboring houses to the south and east, as well as the view from Route 7. Because lots four, five, 11, and 12, et cetera, are on a hill, additional trees, mixed, deer-resistant, evergreens, and deciduous, should be planted part way up the hill to protect the rural sight lines from Route 7 when headed north. Number five, as these houses are being built to attract young families, it would be ideal if the town could work to mitigate the excessive speeds on Route 7, where these houses will stand. The speed limit change northbound from 30 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour is before the entrance to the new homes. Moving it north of the entrance and improving the compliance would enhance the safety of the new residents. Thank you for the time to address our concerns. We certainly understand the benefit of attracting young families to Kent, but it is worth noting that progress when not carefully undertaken can be a step backwards. Respectively submitted, Dorothy and David Ewer, 119 North Main Street, Kent, Connecticut. Thank you, Alice. Um, so I think that uh, I think that I would like to hear from uh, from the applicants and 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 Mr. Zemanski um, if there's anything that you'd like to <coughs> convey at this at this time. Yeah. Good evening, for the record, Paul Zemanski uh, here with the applicants. We're going to give you a brief update tonight uh, where we are with our progress with respect to the application. Um, we have uh, some slides to show tonight. Um, now that we've met with Mr. Osborne from Public Works and reviewed the roadway, uh, we're going to get him some test pits in the stormwater management areas. I just wanted to make sure before we finalized uh, the plans that any comments that he had, we could incorporate into them. As we had uh, discussed a little bit at the last meeting, uh, it is proposed to be a town road, uh, but we are uh, taking on as part of it uh, the maintenance of the road shoulders, the maintenance of the stormwater management areas, and the maintenance of the catch basin structures themselves. So that means removing the sediment on an annual basis. Um, so in essence, the town's responsibility would be for the plowing of the roadway uh, and its eventual replacement several decades down the road. Um, but the shoulders will be mowed by us, the catch basins will be cleaned by us, and the stormwater management areas the vegetation will be maintained by us and any sediment that collects in them will be removed by, the, by us. And by us, I mean the homeowners association um, because they, they wanna maintain the, the look and aesthetic uh, of the meadow in the detention areas along Route 7, uh, and then just have a mowed path along the edges of the roadway. Um, we also uh, were uh, kind enough to go before the Architecture Review Board uh, they were kind enough to find favorably for the proposed application. Uh, as we indicated at the last meeting, because this is a special permit, um, each of these do then come back uh, to the ARB for their review, as well as to you guys for review. Um, so there will be another uh, crack at the apple, uh, so to speak. I'm going to share. Donna, I can share my screen, right? Yep, you're all set, Paul. Okay, cool.
one of the uh, comments that was received uh, at the last meeting was as it related to the area uh, along Route 7 itself and looking how we might be able to shift back uh, the, the homes and the lots. So what we've done is we've reconfigured the lots such that there's now a band of open space along Route 7, along the entirety of the frontage. And then in the area of the community barn, we have a 25 foot area uh, that will be protected as well. So this area in its entirety uh, will be maintained uh, in perpetuity through the homeowners association and as open space. So we will have uh, that basically maintained as meadow where it will be mowed uh, just as it is today, uh, multiple times per year, but not maintained as a lawn. So it will be kept in a natural state. We've also added several pin oaks and maples along the frontage to kind of mimic the look and feel along Route 7 uh, as it is up and down uh, the area of both the northern and southern end of Kent. To effectuate this open space uh, that has uh, been accomplished by moving the community barn in a westerly direction, as well as the four lots on the southern end of the site. Um, so they have been shifted back further from the roadway. Uh, let me just turn that off. Oops. Uh, you guys had also requested uh, that we review uh, the, the look and feel as well as the rendering. So I'm, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew and Angie and they can just tell me when to, to move on the slide so that they can go over the additional uh, renders that they did for ARB, as well as the view from the roadway. Okay, thank you. Uh, and for the record, Andrew Bacon. Angelica Bacon. Uh, thanks for uh, meeting again on this. Um, the updates to the rendering, um, and, and again, the, the exact tree, tree locations are, are not in perfect sync with, with Paul because these were being worked on in parallel, but um, this uh, compared to last time shows more of the opening um, along Route 7 to preserve the, the meadow feel uh, uh, in the barn area. Go ahead, go ahead, Paul. The, this was from last time, this is unchanged. These are uh, other projects that, um, that are similar. They're not our projects, um, interior. Um, we met with the our architectural review board. Um, uh, we feel it was a, a, a very great meeting. Um, we updated this plan just slightly, <clears throat> slightly the bars, the two bars had shifted, um, but it's essentially the, the same um, as what we showed before. The next unit type uh, example is, um, is unchanged from last presentation. And uh, we did uh, come with uh, some, some visualizations of these units. Um, the, this is the first unit, so uh, one view of it. Um, and it, you know, this is representative, uh, uh, the hardscape isn't, isn't in the rendering. Um, so that's one view of it, the same unit, the next view of all um, is, is what, we're, what we're aiming for. Um, and between the, um, amongst the units, we're, we're talking about variety of material finishes. Um, so for a, well, this is more for the architecture board, but we showed them about this is how we're using the same language to, um, to create uh, diversity. diversity and variability um, and distribute them uh, sensitively across the site. Um, so they can be site specific, yet there's uh, the consistent design and language. Next, uh, Paul is showing that just zoomed in a little bit more. And you asked us to show what that would look like. Um, so this is a, a, a photo montage uh, from, from some shots we took along Route 7. Um, it's showing uh, the, the edge of the cluster on the, in the front. 
uh, on the left and the barn and uh, the scale of, of what's happening up uh, further on the hill. Um, Paul on the next one, uh, just because this was where we were, I didn't want to make it look like we were cherry picking or hiding. But those are the massings that we're talking about. And on the next slide just shows you a, a diagram of where that view is, is coming from. Just to be fully transparent, um, we're sort of working with the views that we that we had. So that's what you're seeing. And then the next slide is, is the same, just back to the rendered view. Um, so that was in response to uh, the feedback that, that we got last time um, in the concerns about how it was just going to feel uh, like you're still seeing this meadow type uh, experience when you're at this northern gateway, which we agree is very important um, to Kent. Uh, next slide, Paul. Um, we were also asked, and Paul, you can chime in on this too. We were asked to um, talk about how we would um, ensure that going into the future, the future of the site was in, was consistent with the intent of this proposal that we have right now. And um, there's sort of three mechanisms that ex to to exist, and one that we are we are going to add to that. Um, since they are special permit requirement. Um, and the architectural review board, um, it's our understanding that even with a planning and ARB approval of the master plan, each structure will require a special permit to review. So any new construction or demo would require a special permit review in kind. Um, the existing zoning regulations um, that, that we're working within, and because we have done this cluster, uh, develop, uh, cluster concept, well, the lot size is already small, so there, there is just a, a geometry and uh, limitation of, of the size of what, what can happen. Our uh, high restrictions are uh, effectively limiting us to two-story structures. We already have detached garages in our proposal, so there are barriers to adding additional outbuildings without special approval. Uh, so those are the existing things that, that make it difficult to change the, the intent of the proposal, but uh, we're also going to have a homeowners association and covenants within that, um, not limited to this list, but uh, you know, there would be approval for any new construction of significant alterations, demolitions, uh, additional outbuildings. Uh, same for our hardscapes uh, and significant landscape alterations, stuff that would impact the view corridors or the scale um, that, that's beyond just local, like small plantings. Um, we would, uh, including that specifically a large caliper tree addition or removal. Um, we will, the covenants will have design guidelines for cladding materials, finishes, fenestration, roof style, building type, et cetera. Um, stuff that would be consistent with the proposal. And similarly on, on the landscape guidelines, uh, the intent is to keep it in harmony with the meadow and wooded um, areas that the site has both of, and uh, that things should be complementary in species and scale. And uh, that, that's the update to the presentation and we can continue the discussion. Um, either Paul, you can take over again or. Yeah. Uh, can you guys see me now? Okay. <clears throat> For the record again, Paul Szymanski, um, S-Z-Y-M-A-N-S-K-I and give my spelling wrong, sorry. And that's those bacon, the two C's, B-A-C-C-O-N. Um, so we're, we're still doing a little bit of work. We just didn't want to give you guys a change knowing that there might be tweaks with, with um, Rick. So that's why we didn't send you a, a progress set because we don't want to inundate you with plans that are constantly changing. Now that I have his plans, I'm incorporating that. I'm meeting with the fire department as it was requested, WPCA doing the test pits that Rick requested. Um, and we've also been monitoring the speed because we have the benefit of the, the radar uh, on the speed limit side directly adjacent to our curb cut, we are finding that the speed is in the order of 35 to 40 miles per hour. Um, there are renegades that are occasionally exceeding that, uh, most certainly, um, but but the overwhelming majority is 35 to 40 miles an hour, which was surprising to me. I honestly did think it was going to be more going slowly into town, um, but it is not. Um, so I know Matt had requested the sightline analysis. Now that we have that data, um, we're almost complete with that map as well. 
Um, so in short order, uh, you guys are gonna get some, some tweaks which are incorporating what we presented tonight, um, as well as the comments that were received um, last month as it relates uh, to the two letters from the neighbors. I'll briefly go over those because I know you guys have a long night uh, ahead of you. Um, as part of the revisions that we've made uh, since the last meeting uh, and looking at the potential for wildlife to cross from the easterly side of Route 7 to this side, we, we now have incorporated that corridor 25 foot wide band southerly to northerly along our property line along the road. What this affords us is north of the community barn, uh, the lots now uh, themselves, the, the developable area is set back a minimum of 100 to 130 feet from the edge of the roadway. So there's the existing mature woodland that's going to be preserved in the northerly half of the property along Route 7, um, which then allows uh, any animals to stay in the woods on the northerly end and continue over. They also could go over the meadow uh, by the barn itself. Um, we did add supplemental plantings uh, along Route 7 as well to assist uh, with the screening. Um, as it relates to uh, looking at additional landscaping for each individual lot, um, as this is a subdivision, we're showing features such as street trees, uh, both along the proposed town road and along Route 7. When each lot comes in, it will have its own individual landscaping plan. Uh, associated with each lot itself. Um, we are in agreement with respect to the speed limit. So we are submitting to DOT both of the letters um, as they are in, in the close area of, of the proposal um, as, as residents who have lived there so that the DOT can see the experiences and the concerns of those who already live there as it relates uh, to the speed that currently exists on there, the speed limit that is. From a modular uh, construction perspective, um, it is difficult to find a modular builder that matches the look and feel and the aesthetic uh, that we're looking here for to stay consistent with the rural character. Um, but what, what they are intending to do is hire local contractors as opposed to a modular company, which would be outside of the area and, and not give benefit to the local contractors. But what we're going to attempt to do is do a series of houses all at once, a cluster of them to minimize the overall construction time period while giving work to the local tradesmen. Um, and then uh, Andrew touched on the restrictive covenants, uh, which we'll put in the letter form for the record as well. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Look forward to getting you the revised plans well in advance of the next meeting uh, so that you can see the changes and, and we'll provide a letter explaining each of the revisions that have been made as well. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, is there, are there any comments from the from members of the commission? Does, do any of the members of the commission have an opinion as to whether, um, whether the, the, the site layout is enhanced by pushing those four southerly lots um, further towards the west, as, uh, as as Paul has shown us tonight. Hey, Daryl. I, I thought that it was an enhancement to have that uh, buffer from the road. Um, I thought that the rendering of the view channel looking northward as you exit town, I think the, the focal point was the barn and the meadow, not necessarily the home. So I think stepping them back a little bit um, did contribute to that effect. And um, I think having a few mature canopy trees along the road keeps the density low in terms of vegetation. So once again, you have that open experience of driving northward and having that relief from town because of the Western meadows. And uh, you know, in terms of the wildlife corridor, I generally leave work in the dark and encounter the deer <laughs> each night. So, I think having extra space to quickly absorb them as they cross over, uh, there's not a problem with them working their way through uh, the subdivision. They don't have a problem simulating into you know, some, some realm of development. So I think not having a barrier along the road will, 
will enhance that corridor um, to wrap the property frontage. Okay, um, so Paul, you're sharing your screen, so I can't see anybody else. So if anybody- Oh, sorry, uh, let me stop. I'll stop, sorry, Matt. Oh, no. <laughs> How's that? Is that good? That's, yeah, I, I, I can see everybody now. Um, okay, sorry. Not, that's not that I didn't like looking at that pretty picture. Um, although I have to say that how much nicer would it be if those, uh, if, if those uh, power and cable and, and overhead lines were underground? Amen. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, commissioners? Um, members of the public, any comments? Um, okay, then I will, uh, I will I will get on my soapbox just for a minute. Um, Matt, and um, I think Greg had his hand up and I know Dorothy just came out of no video. So I don't know if they want to speak or not. Okay, great. Then I'll, I'll step down off my soapbox and, uh, and um, open the floor. Greg, yeah, hi, Dorothy. Sorry, it's, Go ahead, it's so Dorothy. Thanks, thanks so much. And I'm sorry, I don't seem to see a picture, but I'm, I'm here. So I'd Dorothy, love- Dorothy, could you tell us your last name, please? Yes, it's Dorothy Ewer. I'm here with my husband, David. And we submitted our letter. Thank you so much for reading it. I would like to address the fact that the southernmost houses are so close to the property line. And is it possible to move those a little bit to the north? It just seems unnecessarily squished. And yes, that would address the animals going from east to west. So I feel like that that one note on our letter wasn't wasn't discussed. Um, and I would love to see that. Also in the rendering, I noticed that you did from Route 7, you can't see those first three houses. And that I think would help all of us to sort of visualize this from the neighborhood standpoint. So it's where we see the barn and we see the edge of the fourth house, but I'd love to see what it looks like directly on that property line. Paul, would you, uh, would you speak to that line of um, proposed arborvitae along the so along the the lot line there and and um, uh, tell us what 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 you think that does to that that property edge? Yeah. So um, for the record, again, Paul Smansky, um, on the southerly property line, <clears throat> we've oriented the lots uh, in the way that the southerly boundary line, uh, which is closest to her, is considered a, a rear yard as opposed to a side yard. So a side yard would be 10 feet, uh, but in this case, we're considering a rear yard, so it's 30 feet uh, off the property line. Uh, the closest home is about 35 feet from the property line. Along the property line itself, um, on the landscape plan, we've proposed uh, staggered rows, two rows of green giant arborvitaes. So for anyone who's not familiar uh, with green giants, uh, they are a evergreen tree. Um, they are need to be sprayed in the first year because they're like candy to the deer in the first year. However, then they get a sour taste that the deer do not like. Um, they take about a, a year to establish and then afterwards they grow uh, on the order of three to five feet per year. Um, and they will grow to a mature height of over 30 feet tall. And that's within a period of a number of six to seven years they can attain that height easily. Um, so there will be uh, between the homes uh, and the common property boundary, a evergreen barrier, a staggered evergreen barrier so that it completely fills in along that southerly boundary line. And it kind of looks like an old old time windbreak that they used to have um, between, between typical properties when, when they were all farms. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, any other comments from the from the public? Yeah, um, Greg Sheridan, um, speaking for Ten Affordable Housing this evening. I'd like to begin by simply <clears throat> thanking the developers uh, for granting us uh, 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 some meeting time with which to share our our differing viewpoints. And I want to also um, include Paul in uh, the fact that 
as we look at this development as it's presented before us, there are so many laudable and notable things these people are to be congratulated for. Um, I told them that <clears throat> when we looked at them and saw that they were not McMansions and they were not six units dividing up the same amount of property, we realized right away that we might have some people that were simpatico with some of the things that Kent Affordable Housing advocates for. Um, we all know that a healthy community uh, is, is, is benefited by housing stock at all three tiers of affordability, the top tier, the middle tier, and of course the moderate tier. All of you commissioners on the planning and zoning board know that <clears throat> the state has gone to small towns and, and cities and, and charged us to basically see what we can do to advocate for affordable housing. Now, in this instance, what we have come to the, the, the developers with is not something that's similar to what you're familiar with, with what we've done before in town, because obviously we have developed uh, apartments and there's no place or, 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 or logic to have something like that be involved in this type of development. We also looked at the sensitive planning of, of the balancing act of open area and, 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 and concentrated areas to get the density that, that economics require. So this venture can go forward and, 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 and be profitable. Or in this instance, we, we smile at each other and say break even, you know, or something like this. But nonetheless, uh, we, in our <clears throat> audacity, uh, laid before them the possibility of, of adding yet more. And that yet more that we, we asked for uh, them to pass judgment on was whether in fact there could be an additional unit or an additional two units if you chose to look at the one additional building that we thought could be possible that would in fact be two homes side by side. And of course, be units that would be affordable by the guidelines that we have to work with for the state. And I'm not gonna bore you with all the details that we went through, but again, I'm gonna thank the developers for being gracious in the audience they granted us. But I want the Planning and Zoning Board to understand that right now, you are the people that are targets for Hal and my presence here tonight, because you, as each one of these things come up, have the ability to stand back and look at this and say, okay, can we add a little bit to what we need in this town as each future development comes before us? Uh, I think there's a way, but I will be uh, truthful in saying I don't even begin to have access or understanding of the economics that the developers are dealing with. And um, having said that, I'm, I'm going to uh, leave it in each of members of the Planning and Zoning Commission's mind to rack their brain and, and see if there isn't, uh, you know, possibly a way for us to look at this and, and, and include something uh, that would be beneficial to our town and community. The one other thing I'm going to say, though, as being a designer and having been involved in projects for all of my professional career is, you know, we've talked a lot about animals and how they go north-south and how they go east-west. Um, <clears throat> I know that animals are very much like people and people adapt. Route 7 has probably changed its direction over the course of 75 or 80 years and we've adapted. The animals will do the same. There's no huge fences, there's no uh, solid stone walls to prevent them varying from what they are doing right at this particular moment. So I'm going to say that Hopefully, you know, we as a planning and zoning commission can adapt and vary a little bit as well and, and, and try to put um, concern for potential affordable housing in the community a little bit higher on, on everyone's priority list. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to turn it back over to Matt. Okay. Um, thanks, Greg. Um, and is there any other comments? Any other comments from the from members of the public? Yes, Justin, Mr. Potter. Hello, so Justin Potter. 
for the record. Um, yeah, just to sort of piggyback on those comments from Kent Affordable Housing. So Kent has done a very good job relative to other communi communities in the Northwest corner, you know, regarding affordable housing, but it's still 100 units short of its obligation under 830G. Um, now, it, it, just to back up, you know, this, this development is a tremendous benefit to Kent. You know, our housing market is exploding. There's a tremendous amount of demand. Um, property values have gone up 30% in the past year. Um, so adding these 13 units will increase the 830G requirement um, that the state has set. So, and it, it seems like a, a tremendous opportunity to add some affordable housing um, you know, to this development is on you know, town water and town sewer. So, you know, to me, you know, a beautiful thing about Kent is you have the, um, you have the, the density in the downtown with the backdrop of the, the wooded undeveloped hills and I think I've, you know, two more houses there would, would be a, a nice addition, you know, especially if they're, they are, you know, affordable um, as under 830G. So, you know, just piggyback on those kind of affordable housing comments. Um, so as someone who drives down Route 7 routine, I just want to, you know, add to the, the comments of the neighbors that were sent in just regarding the speed limit there. It's sort of, it's a, it's a blind corner, pretty blind corner, you're coming around the, the um, on Route 7 going south. Uh, there and so it'd be great if that that speed limit could be you know moved back to 30, 30 miles per hour, um, you know to the north. Uh, and that is all. And again, thank you. This is a, is a beautiful development. You know, thirteen homes is, is tremendously meaningful during the time when we have you know a severe housing crunch in Kent and beyond. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Um, so I have a question um, for Paul. Paul, I know that you. Uh, I know that you said that you were going to some include the speed limit in a letter to the DOT. Um, my question is: is the is the DOT um, the agency responsible for sidewalks, or does that fall more to the uh, um, to the town of Kent? In all the projects I've done on state roads, um, they've never volunteered to uh, put in any sidewalks. So that doesn't make sense to include in the letter to the DOT um, regarding the um, extension of the sidewalk from um, uh, from just down the road to, to up, up to this proposed subdivision. Oh, it certainly doesn't hurt to make make that request uh, as a formal request if if you'd like to make it, you know, on our behalf for them to consider that and that the commission would find that favorable as well. That allows in the future, if there's grant opportunities through regional grants, um, if that request has been made and part of their record, that assists in the future as well with any grant opportunities that there might be. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, comments from the commission? So on the sidewalks, uh, as a former member of the sidewalk committee, I'll say that uh, there was discussion of uh, including a sidewalk all the way up to it, that this was in our thinking uh, for some time, uh, this development here. It's, um, I, I think it would be a town project. And if, of course, the town could ever see to getting their sidewalks together, that, <laughs> that this, um, this would be an advantage too. Thanks, Wes. Um, I, I wanted to- From the public? Um, sure. Who's who, who's speaking? Oh, that's David Ewer from 119 Main Street. Okay, sure, David. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, one is, what is the length of construction period they uh, expect for the uh, full finishing of the project? Uh, question number one. Question number two would be, uh, if a sidewalk goes in, who's responsible for keeping it shoveled and maintained and whatnot? And is that going to be a town expense? And is this, if this is going on town water and sewer, I guess they're gonna to have to run that up along the road as well, correct? Um, so if those are, if those are, the, if those are the, the three questions, then I would ask no. uh, the applicant. One, 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 one more, is the financing in place? Do, um, do they have the full financing to get the stuff built? They, I'll let them answer for themselves, but they indicated last month that, that they, they had the financing in place. Great. But, um, so those are four questions, Paul, you wanna take those? Yep, definitely. Uh, financing is subject to the local town approvals, obviously. Uh, no one wants to lend money until we have the ability to construct. So <laughs> there's just that one minor caveat. 
Um, as it relates uh, to the sewer and water, yes, it is ex being extended uh, down the roadway itself. Um, as part of that, we have to patch it in a manner that the DOT requires. They have specific requirements where we have to mill on both sides of the patch so that it won't settle and crack unnecessarily. Uh, sidewalk maintenance is a great question that I cannot answer off the top of my head, but I will get that answer for you. Thank you. And length of time? Oh, sorry. Uh, Andrew and Andrew, you want to uh, chime in on that? Um, I, I don't have a, a definitive answer specifically. Um, uh, obviously, from the moving target is is shovels in the ground, and it's all, of, of course, uh, approval uh, dependent. Um, let, as Paul mentioned before, the goal is to minimize the it's in everyone's interest to minimize construction time, of course, um, and to that end, uh, trying to um, take 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 clusters and, and, and do them uh, simultaneously, so it's not uh, unit by unit by unit by unit. Um, so, without giving you a definitive number, there um, we're trying to minimize that. And Miss um, Wasty, I see you've got your hand up, and you're on mute. There we go. Um, so I have a question about the the water and sewage. So Name right and spelling. Um, I know I know I just said it, but would you say it for oh, yourself? Joanne Wasti. Great. Thanks. W a s t i. Um, so um, about the water and sewage, we you know have sewage, but we have a well, so there's no water going as far as our house right now. So if the water is going to this development, it goes past our house, does that mean we will have to go on town water? No. It won't? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Can I answer that, Matt? Sorry. I um, yes, I, 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 I can answer it. So it would be great yeah. if you and, could. And yeah. can, no, you, can you, we go on town water? <laughs> yeah, so, so the answer is you do not need to connect. You will mm -hmm. have the opportunity to connect in the future if you would like but you're not okay. forced to connect in any way. Similar with your septic, um, you do not need to connect. We don't, we don't you would have, have the have, ability. You have sewage? We have sewage, yeah. Okay. yeah. We just don't have water. Okay, thanks. Um, great. Um, I will remind the commission that, uh, that that's what we should be considering um, in looking at this application are some um, certain specific provisions of our regulations. Um, uh, we need to uh, consider the, 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 the VR2 district um, and the requirements there, and that's uh, section 3100. And um, in 3100, it allows for um, one or two family dwellings, one per lot. Um, community centers um, allows for conservation subdivision, which is uh, what we're what we're reviewing in this application. Um, we have to um, consider the, the Kent Village Overlay District, which is an overlay district of the VR1 and VR2, um, which among other things, it, it requires that they maintain the existing village scale and requires architecture review board review. Um, and then obviously there's the considerations of the special permit section 1040 and specifically um, 1040, 10440, and 10450, um, which talk about the different items that we should be um, we should be asking about and reviewing. So, if you let me get there, um, you know, for is this is 10440. These are zoning purposes. Does the proposed use is the proposed use consistent with the purposes of the regulations? Um, has the environmental protection and conservation been um, addressed, reviewed, considered? Um, has the neighborhood um, compatibility been reviewed? Um, is it a suitable location for the use? Um, and are the improvements appropriate for that zone? Um, at 10 for 50, there's design considerations. Um, and 
Um, that brings up the site plan application, which is section 10, 300. Um, and if we go back to 10, um, 350.5, that really gives us um, a good roadmap for what we should be considering. Um, and these are supplemental site plan considerations, the general conformity of the plan with the intent of the town's plan of conservation and development, the arrangement of building structures and the uses on the site, the adequacy of fire, police, ambulance services, adequacy of water and sewage, um, location, intensity and direction of outdoor lighting, um, size and location of out, outdoor storage facilities, um, signs, traffic considerations, the, the traffic flow in and out of the, the, the subdivision, um, further environmental considerations, location height and materials of the walls, fences, hedges, prevention of dust and erosion, preservation of natural attributes, um, design arrangement of buildings, adequacy of, adequacy of design and storm drainage systems, adequacy of landscaping treatment, impact of noise odors and lighting, um, and provisions of adequate storm and surface water drainage. That's, that, I think I said that, that seems to be in there twice. Um, it must be important. Um, and then the considerations of the use standards, which we spent a lot of time talking about at our last meeting, which are really the subject of the, the revised regulations that, um, um, that we as a commission recently approved. Um, so within those parameters, if there's anything that we would like to ask the applicant before they go and finalize this next set of documents for us to review next month, um, either now or very soon after this meeting, we should get those, um, those questions or comments to um, the designers so that they can incorporate um, our concerns. Matt, would it be fair to ask if there's any any additional comments or concerns by the end of next Friday? Say, would that be fair? Um, it would be fair. It would be fair to me. I mean, we, we've had a we've had a month since we talked about this last, Paul. Um, yeah. I think that uh, um, I, I think that for the most part, we we talked about most of these things. Okay. Um, but absolutely, if there's if there's any other comments that we'd like to make, um, a week from tomorrow, I think would be reasonable if that's okay with uh with the balance of the commission okay matt, matt this is alice at what hey, point alice. do we need to uh see the final or some draft of the covenants and the that sort of documentation um i think paul has said that he would have those well in advance of our of our next meeting so we could review them okay. and, and talk okay. about them at our next meeting Thank That's you. correct. So if you guys get me the comments by the end of uh, the day next Friday, I will get you those covenants by the end of the Friday thereafter. That would be great. And that, that'll give us that'll give us better than better than a couple of weeks before our next meeting. Yep. Matt, does the does the fire department have to sign off on join the this? meeting? Yes, yes, and I know I, I know the applicant applicant has started that conversation with the fire department and um, and a, as requested by us um, at our last meeting. And this is I don't even know if this is a question, um, but if are there if there's a dumpster area, does that have to be indicated on the site plan? Like, will the the community houses have dumpsters or? How is that going to work? That's a good question for now. Yeah, if there if there were a tom a common garbage collection area, that would definitely have to be shown on the site plan. I didn't I didn't see one. Um, I suspect that they'll do individual. But Paul, can you answer? Uh, that's a fantastic question, Ann. Let me uh, touch base with Andrew and Angie and Eric tomorrow on that, and we'll get you a detailed answer. That's a great question. You you got me stumped. That's a good one. <laughs> Let me think about it carefully. I mean, just realize that um, I would like the site plan um, to actually go down to anchor engineering so that they can look at, at it as well. You know, just the overall plan. And Paul and I had talked about this when we did site walk the other day. So, you know, that's going to be included in the timeline as well. So the sooner we can get Paul any information that he needs to do what he needs to do, then we can get the information to anchor engineering and if they're as busy as my office is you know we might 
not be able to get an answer back from her in time from for them to respond by September. Would it be okay to give her a heads up, Donna, that I'll have those plans by the 27th okay. so that she knows they're coming? Yep, I'll send her an email tomorrow. Awesome, thank you. Anything else? Um, Greg, I see you've got your hand up. You're on mute, Greg. Not yet. Now. If, if I may, I'd just like to punctuate what I said earlier, which is that there are two people I'm speaking to tonight, or two groups that I'm speaking to tonight. And the developers have been gracious in giving Ken Affordable Housing an audience for a back and forth. But what I want to do now is I want to reinforce um, my mission, which is to have the planning and zoning commissioners all uh, be mindful of, of what we as a town have been charged to do, which is to, you know, look, find, and affect more affordable housing. And um, I've been back and forth with Andrew and Angelica, and, and we've talked about, you know, the next time out, the second chance, and we smile and we laugh, and, and I know they're well-meaning, and I, and I understand that but everybody has to deal with their self-interest and their self-interests are different than can affordable housing right at this point. But I wanna be sure that the planning and zoning members understand that affordable housing is part of their mission. And I wanna make sure that everybody that comes along isn't given a, a mulligan for a second chance. So I'm gonna end it by saying that um, when we started doing what we were doing a number of years ago, people shook their heads and said, good luck with that. Everybody knows what NIMBY means. And in the course of time between then and now, we've demonstrated that affordable housing not only fits and blends nicely into the town of Kent, but it's a real attribute. Thanks very much. I'll turn it back over to you, Matt. Great, thanks, Greg, and you know, thanks for the reminder. I'll I, I'll speak for the commission um, in assuring you that we understand the uh, um, the importance of um, affordable housing. Um, uh, in this case, um, I think that we are we're 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 wrestling with the preservation of open space um, and the uh, and the the minimization of the development on that parcel. Um, I will uh, ask the commissioners if they um, would be willing to um, request um, and approve um, a couple of extra lots, um, meaning that there would be less open space. We wouldn't make our, well, we'd have to ask whether we'd make our 40% um, plus our 15, but would the commission members um, be willing to trade um, our stewardship of the of the conservation lands for um, stewardship of um, uh, the, the the housing stock. Matt, yeah. may I speak? Yes, Karen. Um, I think we're also putting on in the back seat our responsibility for rural character and the conservation. Um, I certainly applaud the developers for their design. I think they've done a terrific job with it. I know we changed the zoning regulations that permits this property to have 19 homes and they feel they're doing a terrific job at 13. But I have to tell you, I went to the property, I stood on Route 7 and I have two concerns that I had at the last meeting as well. Um, and the first one being the traffic. <clears throat> I, I'm sure they'll do a sensible job, especially with Rick Osborne's involvement in getting in and off the highway, but 35, 40 miles an hour is not safe. And also my biggest concern it still remains to be the number of lots or number of homes that are there. I have to tell you, I had a very hard time standing there and visualizing 13 homes with a, with car, uh, a garage attached. I, 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 I see the, the uh, renderings and the pictures that they showed us, they're terrific, but they didn't show the whole development. And I think it's too much. 
I think it's too much. And if the developers or the commission feels that they want to make some of those homes affordable, that's a whole other story. But I'm going to stay on record by letting this commission know that I feel that's that's too much development on 12 acres. And maybe the solution is to remove some of the ones that are closest to the neighbors, that are closest to uh, those property lines. Um, that's all. I, I, I think they're the right, the right uh, operators to be able to develop this property. I think their style is terrific. I think they have too many homes there. Thanks, Karen. Um, I, I, I will respond to that. Um, and before we revised the regulations, um, there, the zoning was the same as the as the VR two, which allowed for um, ultimately the same number and slightly slightly less. It was eighteen or nineteen, maybe it was eighteen point eight versus nineteen point two. Um, lots um, without the um, without the open space requirement. So, um, it's, yeah, I just I just want to make that clarification that the regulations before we change them um, didn't allow for a conservation subdivision in the VR two. So this it, it gives us some flexibility. Um, I agree that 13, 13 homes out there is uh, is it's going to be a change, but it's it's it's, it's for me it's far better than nineteen. Well, I, I agree with you, and we don't need to hash this out in public. But um, you know, it, the, the the problem is, as I say at the opening of my statement, we are also we also have a responsibility to keep the rural character and conserve and conserve some of our properties, and that's the northern gate to our town. And I just think it should be a smaller development. I think what they're doing is terrific. And I think the open space that they've preser preserved, although now there's a there's a building out in the middle of it, uh, is also very good. But I think they should drop the number of homes. Just my opinion. Okay, thanks, Karen. Um, uh, Justin, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah. So, so first, this is a village residential district. It is under the Kent, you know, zoning regulations. It's intended to be a residential area. The, um, the the rural the rural use area is where the open space is supposed to be preserved, um, and sort of going back to the minutes and seeing how this this conservation district overlay sort of got got put in in there, you know, is because this is a, a request from the develop, developer um, to change the Kent zoning regulations to you know accommodate what they what they wanted and what they wanted is beautiful and it's great, but you know traditionally, well, you're coming from New York City, you know, if you if a, a developer comes to a you know the the um, community board or the zoning agency to to request a change in their favor. They're usually the zoning board goes goes back and says, "We want something you know in exchange for this this zoning change that, you, that you're you're asking for." Um, you know, Kent has you know tons of open space, uh, but you know something that's missing right now is is affordable homes. So it, I think the zoning commission should you know sort of use this opportunity, sort of acknowledging that they gave the developer what they wanted to allow the, them to partner with the Kent Affordable Housing to you know, include two more homes. I, 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 understand, your, I understand your position. Um, I, 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 for one, believe that we, uh, we, we crafted a, a good re regulation for all of us. Um, so, but I'll tell the, uh, does anybody else have any, anything to say before we, uh, before we wrap this up? Yeah, one more comment from David Ewer. Yes, David. I would uh, go uh, applaud what Karen said as far as uh, the open space. I agree, Kent has a lot of open space, but I don't think you want to fill it on the way into the village. You know, there's a, there are better areas to fill up with more dense housing, and it's not when you have people coming into a small town village, old New England feel. You want to surround it with uh, a lot of development. You want to have that where it's not as visible and not on one of the two or three main roads into town. That would be my my advice. And so I agree with Karen on that. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, and thanks everybody for your comments. And I, I don't want to I don't want to sort of cut this off before everybody's ready. But um, I would like to move towards moving on. Um, is thank there? 
Is there any objection to continuing? So we, I'm sorry, we have to accept the uh, the request for um, extension. So um, I would look for a motion um, to accept that request. I make a motion that we accept the extension. I'll second. Um, great. Any discussion? Then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Motion carries. Um, Thank you okay. for your time. Yeah, great. Thank you, Paul. And um, I'll, we will, what, Donna, do I need a motion to, to continue the public hearing? Okay. Um, I would look for that motion to continue the public hearing Thank until you. our next meeting. I make that motion. I'll second. Great. Um, all those in favor? So signify by raising your hand or saying aye. And motion carries. Okay. Thanks again, everybody. Um, to the members of the public and the applicant, um, it was another good discussion and we'll see you uh, in 30 days. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on to um, agenda item 6A and I will read that uh, um, 6A1 and I'll read that um, legal notice. Donna, do I need to read both the legal notice for the website and for the Republican American, or are they, they essentially the same thing? I could just read one. Yeah, read the one. Um, I, I would, you know what? Um, I would read the the one to the for the town's website. Okay, great. So I'm there now. So uh, um, Kent Planning and Zoning Commission, 41 Kent Green Boulevard, Post Office Box 678, Kent, Connecticut 06757, Notice of Public Hearing. The Town of Kent Planning and Zoning Commission shall hold a public hearing via Zoom meeting on Thursday, August 12, 2021, beginning at 7 p.m. to discuss and possibly act on application numbers 71-21C and 72-21SP, Kent Station LLC, 9 Railroad Street, Map 19, Block 42, Lot 15, change of use from retail to, to residential per subsection 4124.26 of 41.2. 4124.26 period. Any corresponding documentation will be attached to the official agenda. At this hearing, persons may participate and be heard. Please note, written communication must be received by the land use office at least 24 hours in advance of the meeting. And the Zoom meeting number can be located on the official agenda that will be filed on the Town of Kent's website a minimum of 24 hours prior to the official Zoom meeting. Matthew Winter, Chairman. Um, and Donna, with that, um, is there anything that you would like to add before we turn it over to the applicant? Um, no, basically what, um, if you remember, um, we tweaked our regulations in order to make more residential in the commercial district. Um, and that was done quite some time ago, um, trying to get um, a, a surveyor to come in and do a site plan at this point in time takes months. So they were a little bit behind so now they are now coming forward to actually make the change to those three structures that are located um, next to the Kent Pizza Garden. Um, so this is the official change of use so that they will be in compliance with the new regulation that was put into place. Great, then I will turn this over to the applicant. Um, I see Mr. Mr. McBee. Um, and your intrepid designer. <laughs> Thank you for uh, seeing us tonight. And, uh, you know, we're excited to be able to get started on this. And it's really not our intent uh, other than, you know, repairing things uh, on the exterior to make any exterior facing changes uh, to these buildings. So it's really at this point, um, you know, we, we did get the, the site plan completed here. There is a um, small storage shed that's um, not sited properly. It's, it's actually in the setback. So we're proposing to pick that up and move it to the back of the property. And then we also, uh, for these residential units, although we own 60% of the parking lot that's shared with the pizza garden, we would like the residential units to have their own parking. Um, and you can see that on the site plan that we're proposing. 
um, to access uh, or provide access to those off of the right of way at the back of the property at the north side of the property. Um, and, and that's really what we're looking to do. I, I think Tassos has come up with a great interior plan for us and uh, we're looking forward to, I mean, certainly um, the buildings need new roofs, that sort of thing, but they'd be in, in keeping with uh, the current style. I can share the site plan if the commission would like to, to look at the, uh, the plan a little more carefully. Um, is that okay, Donna? Absolutely. Okay. There we are. So the, the, these are the three structures and the, 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 the relocated shed, which is currently in this location and we're moving it back to there. Um, and again, we're providing the parking spots um, along this right, this uh, pathway in order to um, you know to provide more private uh, spots for the uh, for these uh, buildings. Um, we'll um, provide landscaping, uh, although there's existing landscaping on the property. Uh, and as, as John said, uh, we're basically uh, retaining the architecture, retaining the materials, but we're replacing deficient materials and materials that, that no longer uh, service. Um, the interior revisions are relatively minor and we're not adding any uh, extra space to any of these structures. So um, in, looking at the, in looking at the floor plans, um, I understand, I think I understand that each of these buildings, one, two, and three, will be a single dwelling unit? That is correct, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I ask in reference to um, uh, 4124, 26 A, um, with regard to the, to the, the, the lot area size required for each unit, and you're, you're well within the um, with three units, that's that's sixteen thousand square feet that that's required. No, I'm sorry, it's uh, twelve thousand square feet, and you've got um, seventeen, almost eighteen. Okay, so that's and and you're not planning on doing any. I think you said that you're not planning on doing any exterior renovation, but then you said that you were going to replace finished materials that are not serviceable. Does that include anything on the outside? Well, for example, the the roof of the uh, of the 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 building to the uh, closest to the west side um, is is really quite caved in, and uh, and the material itself would need to be replaced because uh, it'll start leaking. And and what about on the on the railroad car or the the one and a half story frame building in the the one and a half story frame building? I believe the roofing is relatively new. We're not planning to to do anything to it. The railroad car also seems to be so fairly sound. And um, I don't think it needs, um, you know, there may be repair here and there at the edges or some flashing, but that's it. So up, our, our position really is to just maintain the architecture and, uh, and keep that the feel of the overall place as, as, as much as possible. And Donna, that would be, so th those, those modifications to the exterior of the buildings would be considered minor, minor in nature as long as they're being replaced in kind and, and we would not require a, um, a, 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 an audience with the Architectural Review Board? That's correct. As long as I have something that I can put in the file that says that everything is being done like for like, um, yep. yeah, they would, they would be fine with that. Um, the only thing, you know, depending on the, the amount of landscaping that you're going to be doing, they might want to look at that, but I don't, I don't even think that that's really going to be coming up. Yeah, well, uh, I don't think, and John, you can chime in, I don't think we're planning to, to, to really um, do anything overly ambitious here. No. It'll be out of place in town, you know, to do anything terribly elaborate. <coughs> And then I just have one more question regarding the site plan and the proposed um, the proposed parking areas. Um, I know that there's there's diagonal parking on the opposite side of the street from where the uh, from where those cars will be backing out of those nine by eighteen spaces. Um, oh, here. 
Yeah, just that that's right. On the on the back side of the the Kent Station pharmacy building. Um, so I know that you usually carry 18 for straight in parking. Um, it's probably less than that, but is it is it 12 feet? I don't I don't think you're talking that's not where Kent Station is. So that that's this uh, drive is where the welcome center is, the, the town bathrooms. It's off of that drive. Oh, okay. Let yeah, share. all right. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Then I don't have any other questions. I don't have any other questions. Uh, will those parking spots have signs to prevent those from becoming de facto visitor parking, or is that not an issue? And will the excavation around that 30 inch maple, you know, be attempted with some care to try to minimize uh, root damage to that tree? Yeah, we're big believers in preserving trees. So, um, you know, we, we certainly would do that. And I hadn't thought about the signage. I, we probably would want to sign it as private. Um, that would make sense. But to be quite honest, that parking lot, I've never seen more than two cars in it. We see a lot of uh, hikers drying out their tents, but uh, it, <laughs> there's rarely cars there. Question, what would you do with the double door that's on the larger house building? Um, let me uh, share with you, I have a set of preliminary drawings. Uh, what we would probably do is um, essentially leave the doors where they are. I don't think there's a need to, and I will share that screen with you. Uh, um, you're talking about these doors here. Yep. Yes. I don't think there's a reason to, to replace them at all. I think we're, we're basically, if they're sound, we'll fix them, uh, weather strip them, and basically essentially fix them. Just use them as for daylight, and uh, that'll be the minimum change in the character of the existing building. But the main entrance then is to the, to the rear. That's correct. You'll be coming in this way. All right. right. I understand. So basically this gets reoriented because the, the, the parking is on the other side. So as you drive in, you walk to a pathway and you right. get there. Right. Um, I have a question. Uh, these buildings are, are pretty old. What are the basements like? <laughs> well, that, that we'll need to we'll need to uh, to do some masonry work, especially on the one to the west. It's a little crumbly, and we do need the as I don't know if you've noticed, but the 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 northern portion of the roof has a has a very large deflection in it that we need to take out. So we'll need to get in there and put down a footing and um, and jack it up so that it's um, it's not a structural um, problem. But uh, we will refurbish whatever we need to refurbish. Is there a basement in the uh, blue house, the little blue building? Um, the one Tassos was speaking about. It's, yeah, it's this, a half basement, right, Tassos, I think? Or yes, I yes. Let me share again and uh, we'll can talk about. There we go. Yes, there, there is a, a, a door here that leads to a, a small basement, partial basement, and the other side is quite, um, quite shallow, but we'll, we'll have to get in there and, and repair it. And then the, the yellow house? The yellow house seems to be in reasonable shape for its age. And the foundation seems to be reasonable age. It, it, it was uh, um, redone not too long ago. So they, they uh, basically shored up things and insulated. And um, it's not in bad shape, actually. The, ba the basement? OK. It's, yeah. it's a full basement, as I recall. Right, right. There's, there's some um, mechanicals down there. 
and the the access is over on the uh, on the east side of the building. Thank you. And there's no basement in the caboose. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We haven't found one anyway. I knew that. <laughs> um, are there you any know, other also questions? So in this picture, you see the propane tanks. I mean, it just is a, a personal pet peeve of mine. So it's our intent yeah. to, and, and we've checked with the health department, it's our intent to bury the propane tanks. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. don't like seeing them. Mm -hmm. Questions or additional comments from the from the commissioners? Well, personally, I think this is a, a, a slam dunk. Um, but it's it's not successfully retail space. It would be a very fine residential space, and I think it's a much more appropriate use. I I I, I concur, Wes. Um, are there any? Is there anybody? Well, actually, before I ask for 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 comments from the public, um, uh, because the because the entrance of uh, Building Three is now moving to the other side, um, will you make provisions for a walkway from the from the parking area, just maybe a gravel? Yes, very very simple. Either either step stones in the grass or a gravel path. And would you be okay with adding that to the site plan? Sure. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, are there any comments from the uh, from the public? And Tassos, if you wouldn't mind stopping sharing your screen, so I could see, so I, so I could see everybody and see who wants to uh, jump in and comment. Justin. Yeah, I'm just curious. So what's what's the um, the plan for these these buildings once they're residential? Are they going to be rentals or are they going to be for sale? No, they will not be for sale. At least in the immediate, any sort of immediate term, the idea is to rent them. Okay, yeah, so long-term rentals or Airbnb or? You know, I don't, we don't really like the term Airbnb. We haven't decided whether they're long-term, medium-term, um, you know, that, that's to be determined. I mean, the, the market is uh, very active right now. There, yeah. As I'm sure you're all aware, there's a, a shortage of uh, housing in town and in the area in general. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're still assessing that, but uh, there, there's very, very strong demand. Right. Anyone else? Then if there's no further discussion or comments from the commission, I would, uh, I would, I think we're closing the public hearing, Donna, before we before we accept the waivers, yes? I think that's right. That's yes, that's right, sorry. Okay, <laughs> what are you doing back there? Motion to I'm close not telling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so motion to close the public hearing, Wes? So moved, yeah. Yes. Second. Um, any further was discussion? Was that Daryl? That was Daryl, yep. yeah. Um, then hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Three, four. Motion carries. Great. All right. Thanks. Um, so the next uh, the next item would be to accept the proposed waivers from the applicant. And that list of waivers came across in our um, in the material, the meeting, meeting materials. And so it would be two, five, eleven, and thirteen. I make the motion that we accept those waivers. Second that. Okay. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, David. Um, any discussion regarding the waivers? Then hearing none, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. And motion carries, okay. Um, and now to the application at hand. Um, the, is there any further discussion regarding this, uh, 
regarding the application and the um, and the testimony of the uh, applicant. Um, I I agree with Wes that uh, this is I I think this is it, it fits squarely within our uh, um, within the 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 directives of our plan of conservation development suggestions of our of our POCD um, and we I, I thought that that the applicant and Penner did us a, a good service Steve Penner did us a service of um, you know bringing this to our attention and and uh, asking us to to revise slightly the the regulations to make this uh make this fit squarely within uh the regulations um so i would look then for a motion make a motion that we accept application the applications number 71-21c and 72-21sp kent station llc 9 railroad street map 19 black 42 lot 15 change of use from retail to residential per 4124-26. Second. Um, Adam, would you would you mind terribly amending that motion to include the uh, addition of the of the the walkway that we discussed um, during our, um, our our discussions from building three back to the to the proposed new parking area? Yes, and and that uh, Tassos will. Show it on the plan. Second concurs. Great, thank you both. Um, any discussion from the uh, members of the commission? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. One, two, three, motion carries. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, thanks, to, uh, thanks to the applicants, applicants and uh, good luck. You know, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks for all your Thank you. Um, okay, so six B one. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna suggest and maybe look for a motion that we move six B one um, uh, to um, after six B six. So moved. Second. And any discussion? And all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Okay, great. Motion carries. Um, all right. So then, six B two is uh, is Barry LeBenz for thirty three Camps Road LLC, thirty three Camps Road, map seventeen, block twenty eight, lot thirty, August 29, twenty nine, twenty twenty one, Hop Harvest Festival special event. Um, I suspect that David is. Uh, we recuse myself for the moment for this okay. item. Great, then I will elevate uh, Anne to voting status for this one. And um, Donna, do you have anything you'd like to, uh, to, to lead in before well, we ask uh, Barry? Um, I, this is just a, um, another request to the similar um, events that they've had in the past couple of years. Um, something that they've been doing, Barry, I don't know, three years now, maybe four. You probably didn't do it last year. We didn't have one last year. Uh, our first harvest was 2000. I think we actually did it before the brewery was even open, which was yeah. when we last came to you for it. Uh, so 2014 was our first harvest. Right. So, you know, there, when, when, they, when Barry came to, in front of the commission at the, the first time, um, we had asked him to continue to come back each time they want to have it and just fill us in and let us know what they're going to be doing. So that's why Barry is here. And hold just one sec, Barry. So, so this is this um, is a is an annual um, an annual approval from it's once once per annum approval um, from the Planning and Zoning Commission for an event that's outside of um, a permitted use. Right. Um, so the things that we should be considering are somewhat the same things that we considered um a week and a half ago with regard to you know traffic and public safety and uh and noise and and those kinds of things so barry why don't you uh why don't you jump sure. in uh so basically <clears throat> we have a small hop yard on the farm uh we don't have certainly the scale or the means or interest in we, we 
normally hops hops are very hard to pick. You have to like pick these little flowers off the off the vines that grow 20 feet up in the air. Uh, so rather than paying and being underwater on like a large scale harvester, we invite people to come and pick hops and you know enjoy a little bit of beer and you know ha have some food by a professional caterer prepared and listen to live music and spend a day outside on the farm. So uh, from 11 to three are the hours I believe we run it. Uh, we, you know, we sell about a hundred tickets between staff and then some family and friends. Uh, I think we have a few more people after that. Um, we pick hops and we brew a beer with the hops that day. So they go right from the yard into uh, the beer that we're making and we avoid any processing that are normally is normally associated with it. It's pretty simple. So a hundred, a hundred tickets you said, Barry. Yep. And how many cars is that going to be? It's, it's probably not, not going to be a hundred, right? It's going to be. No, I mean, we, we have like 30 some odd spaces. I want to say, um, you know, we use part of the hop yard that we take down for excess parking. So no on-street parking at all? No, 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 no. Everything is on our property. There's zero parking on street. That's like, we've got volunteers who run where the cars go and entry and everything like that. You know, we normally have a volunteer staff of about 10 to 15 people. Um, so we're making sure that it's, it's less traffic than what we might see over the course of five hours on a Sunday when we're open to the public. And we're, yeah, we're not open to the public during the hop harvest. So, you know, it's on Sunday, we're closed to the public. It's just the people coming for hop harvest. Are you usually closed on Sunday, Barry? No, we've, uh, we came during, it was last year, we came for an approval to be open for on Sunday. So you'll have to somehow let everybody know. Yeah, so we, you open. know, on social media and our website that we're closed, you know, and if somebody comes, it's, you know, I'm sorry, we have a ticketed event. There's a sign at the driveway, you know, and somebody's there to handle that. The difficulty is getting people not on social media. Any other questions? Um, then, I would look for a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the application um, for 33 Camps Road, LLC at 33 Camps Road, map 17, block 28, lot 30, August 29, 2021 for the Harp Hop Harvest Festival special event. Second. And any further discussion? I mean, I, I, I think that, uh, I, I think that, that our approval um, can be based upon the, what, what Barry told us in terms of what, what, the, what the event looks like. Um, Donna, when Barry comes in to fill out that for, for, the, for the actual permit, um, what does the permit say? Does the permit say hours of operation and uh, a number of people? Yep. Yeah, okay. I can put that on. I have a little box in the stipulation center, you know, um, section, and I can put down, you know, that it shall be limited to 100 guests, parking on site only um, for the hours of 11 to 3, and close to the public. Okay. Um, any further discussion? And all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. Okay, great. Motion carries. Thanks, Barry. Have a good night. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, for being Barry. Patient. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Um, okay, so then uh, um, I guess 6B3. Um, this is a follow-up conversation on the special event held for Club Getaway. Um, unless somebody wants to move this um, to after we talk about the, the 
a couple of uh, pools and the and the lot line revision. What what everybody whatever anybody wants to do. I'd make a motion that we move it. So, so we we'll share the applications first and have discussions after. Second. Okay, great. So that's a motion to move it after uh, after the moved six B one. Um, all right, good. So then we're going to move to uh, to uh, agenda item six B four, and um, David's back, um, and I'll give David a chance to vote on the next one. Okay. All right. So David, you're up. Um, so this is. Uh, Application number 76-21C, Paul Zemanski, PE, Arthur H. Howland for Aaron Arigos, 53 Flat Rock Road, map 11, block 40, lot five, construction of pool in the Horizon Line Conservation District. Um, and Donna, is there anything that you need to uh, tell us about before we begin to look at, um, begin to hear from the applicant? I think it's pretty straightforward, actually. So I, I will say that uh, it would be great if we could see the the site plan. I think it's this one um, on the screen. Wait, is it this one? No, I think it's the next one. Wait, no, it's this one. It's the horizon line and wetlands map that, that was somewhat corrupted in the uh, um, in the Google Docs. Which one is that? It's the agenda oh, okay. 64-HL and wetlands map. Yep. I only get half of it. Do you want me to try to share it? Um, sure. <laughs> Unless Paul can. Um, no, because that's something that I created. Oh, that's okay. not mine. Yeah. Um, so just give me a second and let me. All right, so Paul, while Don is doing that, do you want to uh, walk us through the application? <clears throat> yeah, good evening for the record, Paul Szymanski, S-Z-Y-M-A-N-S-K-I. Uh, subject property is located at 53 Flat Rock Road. Uh, they currently have a barn. Uh, they are proposing 45 feet off the barn to construct an in-ground pool, approximately 50 feet long and 20 feet wide. Uh, it's in ground, uh, keeping the same grade as is there. It's in the horizon line. That's it. Adam, do you have a good sense of where this is? You're on mute. You're still on mute. I'm sorry. I was telling you that I'd lost my where I was because uh, because the page got shared. I was disappeared. Um, <laughs> Well, is this is this the Lawler's house? No, it's uh, Aaron Agrios. It it was previously Lawler's house. It's it's Niles' house. Okay, I know the property. Um, I know right where it is, and I I know the property pretty well. Correct. That was yeah. That was the former owner. Technically, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I can't. I I can't actually see anything at the moment because I I'm just looking at that little half thing. Are you? Oh, and, and I and I think that Donna Donna's. I, I think because she's showing this, she's telling us that that's all there is. I th I thought that the page was cut off, but looking at it closely, it looks like uh, it wasn't. Maybe right, Donna. Right. No, uh, uh, it, this is the top one um, is the wetlands. Um, I have a, a huge wetlands map and I have a horizon line map. And what I do is I do snapshots of the property to show you where those districts fall on that piece of property. Okay. And that's just something that I create myself so that we don't have to pull up the whole big maps. So if the top one is wetlands and you'll see there's a little bit of wetlands on the corners. Um, but it's not anywhere near the where the pool is proposed. Um, and then you can see that um, the property where the, uh, the pool is going to be is dead center in the center of the horizon line. So what is shaded um, is, is what is considered horizon line on the horizon line map. So that would be the bottom one with the brown. And if I understand right, 
The red line here is um, Flat Rock. Yeah. Okay, so it's so it really is looking looking at the site plan. Um, it really is right in the Horizon Line District. Right. Mm -hmm. So is the pool and the, or lights for the pool will they be visible? There's no lighting proposed around the pool. Can we get our? Oh, good. Thank you. No lighting. So, I, I you could drive by the property and you'll. Really, what you really, it'd be hard to see where that pool is from the road. And actually, the, uh, th there's an incredible view shed from, from the house going, looking across Aggie Gun's property there. But um, let me show that, you the air, you aerial. See it from yeah, I got it. I, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm looking at now. It's not going to end. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So the blue is the approximate pool area. So the house is close to Flat Rock Road. There's existing vegetation along the roadway, and this is set in the middle of a existing lawn set back from the road. And there's a berm along the back of the house that faces Flat Rock. That's correct. So it's topographically screened as well from the road. Yeah, I don't think that, you know, I mean, from Flat Rock itself, you really can't <clears throat> see where the pool is or not much, but I don't think there's anywhere else, you know, from further away. I don't think there's anywhere that you can see across to see that. No. As far no, as it being in the horizon line. You know, I, I think if you are looking at it from, you know, like Agnes Dunn's property or just further down Flat Rock, <clears throat> what you're going to see is um, is the back of the house that faces Flat Rock, and and so you're not going to see the pool. So from that direction, the pool is blocked from is blocked by the house. Yeah, and coming well, in the opposite direction, coming from South Road, going onto onto Flat Rock, the the barn which they're reconstructing now because it was falling apart um, will block any view from there. <clears throat> And what about from Jennings, where you're, 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 you would be looking up the hill? Is, is the topography there such that uh, there's a mountain um, in the way? Yeah. There's, there's a mountain yeah. in the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't see anything from Jennings. That's what I'm saying, you know, from Flat Rock, when you cross the road from the house, everything goes down. You can't, you know, it, that's, that's what the whole view on, uh, you know, from Flat Rock and Gear Mountain Road is. Everything drops away. Right. A, mm -hmm. until you get to all the way to you know or mountain road is when it starts to come up it's like a giant bowl there there's there's not really anywhere you can see anything yeah okay daryl do you uh have any any input comments so any trees coming down paul due to the construction Nope, it's in an existing lawn. So, I mean, this is an example of where, you know, the horizon line isn't meant to be a, a no visibility zone. You know, there's no vertical element to the pool. There's no trees coming down. And, um, you know, it really doesn't trigger much of, of what we have in mind when we consider what we're looking for or, or to regulate within that horizon line zone. So we want people to put pools in areas that are already cleared if they're going to put a pool in, and that's what's happening here. So I, I don't have any issues with it. Um, any other questions? I know David had asked a question about lighting and, and he got a satisfactory response and, 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 and Daryl with his trees and we talked about uh, um, visibility from those, the, the, mostly from the town roads is what we, what we think about with the Horizon Line District. So if there's no more questions or comments from the commission, I just wanted to make sure I heard correctly. There's no lights on the pool, none? Around the pool, no. If they propose any, they'll have to come back to you because they didn't okay. advise that, advise me of any, David. So you can make that a condition of approval. If they want to add them, we'll come back. <clears throat> uh, 
um, then I would look for a motion. Actually, just, just to bring up that point again, no, did you say around the pool or in the pool? Because generally in the pool, there is light. So just to be clear, there's no light <clears throat> in or around, or are we just talking around? If you guys are okay with the lights in the pool, I guess I'd like to ask for that, but they didn't give me any specifics as related to lighting. I think in the pool would be okay if it's okay with you guys, but anything outside of the pool, um, we would not be proposing as part of this and they'd have to come back to you. I'm okay with that. I, I can't even imagine building a pool without lights in it. I'm not sure if that ever happens. That's what I thought David was hinting at. It's likely there was going to be, you know, lights within the pool and just wanted to clarify. Sorry. So where's my... So I'll make a motion that we um, accept application 7621C, Paul Zemanski, PE, Arthur Howland for Aaron Aragos, 53 Flat Rock Road, map 11, block 40, lot five, construction of pool and horizon line conservation district. Second. With the, with the caveat that there's uh, no lights outside the pool? With the caveat that there's no lights outside the pool. Okay, Wes? Yes, okay. Um, any further discussion? So hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And motion carries. Okay. Thank good. you for your time. Have a great night, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. You too. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Um, okay, now. So we are now at agenda item 6B5, which is a lot line revision. Arthur Callstrom, Ken Hollow Road, map 18, block 28, lot 8 and 9. Um, Don, anything to start? Sure. I don't believe that there's anybody here. Um, but there is somebody on 646-894-0657. I don't know who that is. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, there's two different plans. There's the actual site plan that was submitted by the engineer, which I understood after speaking to them. And then I decided that I didn't think you guys would. So I prepared another one that is 11 by 17 that shows the existing configuration um, of what the two pieces of property look like and what they're actually going to be doing. So <clears throat> if you look at um, the plan that I created on the 11 by 17 paper, you'll see there's the 1728.8 and around that is a blue line with hatch marks in it. The blue line with the hatch marks, that's the original property line. <clears throat> they are taking that property line out and so it's being absorbed into the bigger lot next door. And then they're bringing what they're taking away, they're moving to the other side and they're just kind of almost making the lot look like um, a backward seven, I guess you could say. <clears throat> um, and it's just, they're taking some, they're taking, um, the 1728 is originally 11.21 acres. By absorbing it into the bigger lot, that new lot will now be 1728 becomes 1728.8 becomes 46.26 acres. And 1728.9, which is currently 72 acres, is going to become 37 acres. So I'm I'm glad that you I'm glad that you clarified that Donna because the the, the first the, the actual survey seems to indicate that that 1728.9 is it is really comprised of of three separate four separate lots. Yeah, and it's not. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, and then and then do you want the, me to the, put that up or do you understand? I, I, I don't. I, I don't. Need would you please put it up? I, I'm. Would you please put it up? Because on the on the 
proposal, not the one you did by hand. The 4626 is very clear. But the 72 that becomes 37 is not to me, but. Okay, so <clears throat> 1728 was just this. So it was only 11 acres. 1728.9 did not have this line in it. So it comes up, goes down, across, up, and around, down this way. So what they're doing is they're taking out this line here, here, and they're basically putting it from this corner to this corner. So 1728.9 is going down to 37 acres from 72. And 1728 is going to go from 11 acres to 46. So I, 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 have, a, I have a question regarding just um, the philosophically a lot line revision. Um, is a lot line revision simply reconfiguring two contiguous lots? And you're not... So, so it does, my question is, does it matter where the original lot lines are? Because this, this looks almost like a, it's, it's a, a reconfiguration of the lots, right? Yeah, it's a reconfiguration. It's a swap of property. Um, and as long as we're not creating an additional, an additional lot. Right. Um, or not. additional lots, um, we can, we can approve the lot line revision and we can, we can approve a lot line revision that, that results in fewer lots, correct? Yes. Yep. Now so this, this goes is, from two lots to two lots. It still is two lots. What's changing is the size. Okay. And you have to understand the reason, in some cases, the reason why. This 1728, the way that it's configured, is a rear lot and it had no access. So now what they're doing yeah. is they're taking this line out and the access now to this 1728 now becomes this. But you know, again, we're 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 taking we're taking two lots and we're 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 starting with two lots and we're ending up with two lots. Does you it are. matter to us that that the one is in, in essence it's it's not usable and, and do we care that that becomes now a usable lot so so it, it, it's being used for something as opposed to just being in forced conservation right right it doesn't it doesn't make any difference but it still needs to be approved by Torrington area health who has not done anything has not approved it yet she Donna, can you show me again the access to 1728 so 1728 without these hash right. marks right is a rear lot with no access yeah, I know. Okay, so now you take this line out and this right. line out, and now your entrance to 1728 is this. But right off that, of that hollow road. Okay. And I think this is all put all about uh, a land transaction that's going to happen. Right. Yep. But it's so, so we shouldn't consider this a, 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 a de facto subdivision, right? So we're still, you know, that, that's what I'm somewhat getting hung up on. It seems to be a reconfiguration, but as long as we're starting with two and ending with two, we're, we're, not, we're not changing anything. We are not. Well, well, you're significantly changing the size of one of them. Right. Or, or but you're, of still, them. you're still only have two lots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there an address on that, Donna? No, there wouldn't be because there's no house on it. Address is 911 numbers don't get issued until there's a structure on there. Yeah. But that, and what's, what's that structure that's all the way in the, in the southern corner of the lot? I think that's just one of his barns. He does okay. have a, um, a barn on there. Yep. I couldn't see it. Uh, 
All right, so this is, uh, this is Ken Hall Road. Not too long ago, this piece of property was, um, it went through a forestry operation. So how far down the road is it? It's almost down to, um, well, it's not that far. I mean, you know, this is Tam Shell and this is Camps Road. You know, this is Tangway here. So what's that when it, it's almost down to that funky little intersection. So this is the intersection where you pick up Camps Road right here. Yeah. And then this continues down into, um, it becomes, not Chernisky, it becomes, uh, oh crap. It'll bring you down into, it'll eventually bring you into New Milford, the far corner of New Milford. I if think you, that's Sawyer Hill, right? So, yes, that's right. That's exactly right. So, um, Kent Hollow Road turns into Sawyer Hill in New Milford. Okay, I got it. Okay. Well, won't, won't this allow access from Kent Hollow through Tamshell? Um, no, because there are houses that are on there right now. So none of those lots are empty. So my recommendation is to approve this contingent on Torrington area health approval. Can we get our um our page back? Thank you. You're welcome. You working on your tablet there, Adam? <laughs> no, but I can't I can't see the anything else. I'm just stuck looking at that page and I I can't get to anything else when that's up. Yeah. Uh. Um, does it, it is it is it reasonable to uh, to make that approval to accept the lot line revision done and without the applicant here? Yes. Yeah. Um, is there any other any other discussion or comments from the commission? I guess I just I'm just looking. I mean, I don't have any problem with any of this. I and I understand everything that Donna put up. I don't understand all this stuff that they put up and I on that other site plan it right I don't get it. I don't understand what all these other lot lines are. Right. So it seems it's that that it's confusing to me because of that. Well, that's why I did the other 11 by 17. So I'll make a motion to approve lot line revisions. Uh, Arthur Kalstrom, Kent Hollow Road, Map 18, Block 28, Lots 8 and 9, as proposed by Don, as shown by Don. Second. Do you want to put in there pending Torrington Area Health approval? And, and pending Torrington Health approval. Just to be clear, we're approving Donna's map, right? Yes, we're approving Donna's map. All right. Um, so, Adam, that's uh, did you 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 do you concurred with the the revised motion? Yes, I did. Okay, great. Um, any further discussion? Then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And motion carries. And Alice, is that an abstention or shall yeah. I? Abstention. Okay, great. Um, uh, motion carries. Um, okay, then uh, we are now into agenda item 6B6, which is the uh, um, application number 77-21C, <laughs> Sam Saban for James Lilly and Lily Thorne, 29. Brown Road, Map 11, Block 40, Lot 24, Construction of In-Ground Pool in Horizon Line Conservation District. Um, 
And while I get that open, Donna, is there anything that you would like to um, say before? Is there somebody from the applicant on the, with us? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, for the record, it's uh, Sam Sabin. Hey, Sam. In commission. Um, okay, Donna, anything you want to uh, do? You want to want to let us know before we ask the applicant to uh, walk us through it? No, no, I think that you know Sam can do it since he's here. I'll go ahead and share my screen. You'll have to fight Adam. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, this, so this project is on, uh, Brown Road up on, uh, in the Gear Mountain area. Um, there's an existing house that you guys have approved, uh, previously that's been since been built, um, uh, a very modern structure that's kind of a, 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 a right, right along the middle of Brown Road. Um, and there's a, there's a large meadow, I'll kind of go to the larger screen. Their access is, is from Brown Road down on this end. It goes uh, through a series of wetlands that then comes out to this meadow, existing meadow um, it, it, uh, that um, the house is in, kind of perched up right in the corner. So um, the, the house is, is very sensitive to kind of perching, getting it out of being right in the middle of the meadow to kind of being up right on the edge of the meadow to kind of preserve views from the house down into the meadow. The concept of the pool is to preserve that as well um, and keep the, 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 the pool outside of the view from the, uh, from the existing house, um, but um, a perched up kind of on this uh, hillside. Um, to do that, we are clearing probably about uh, 15 to 20 trees, um, most of which that are under the 12 inch that the commission allows, um, but uh, the, the main um, one that we are clearing that uh, requires uh, the, the commission's permission would be this one 30 inch oak um, that is kind of situated right next to the pool that would be a hazard if it was to be left. Um, you know, whether we move the, we had kind of done some scenarios where we tried to preserve that tree because it is such a beautiful tree um, where we put it up closer to the house, but with the size of the pool, it's, a, it's, a, it's an 18 by 55 foot pool that we're trying to construct it was just not really possible. The grade started to really work against us as we moved further down into the meadow. And then we kind of get closer to the neighbor's house down on that uh, like Southeastern side. Um, and so uh, unfortunately that one would, would be, uh, have to be removed to preserve that. This is the existing tree line approximately shown in this kind of lighter color cloud. And then this would be the proposed clearing. Um, and uh, we would uh, be using a, uh, it would be kind of essentially what we call like a tank pool where the downhill side would be um, a four foot high pool wall, um, but uh, set into grade so that it wouldn't be a uh, you know, minimal impact to the actual existing grades around, um, just filling so that it could be easily mowable as it is now. And then we're trying to preserve this existing hemlock because it does provide screening from the house and then adding a few more hemlocks. And then uh, just a simple kind of grass and perennial planting with some screening around the existing, uh, around the proposed filter pad, which would be down in this area here. The only, the only lights that we're proposing or would be, uh, as kind of discussed earlier, would be inside the pool. Um, and those uh, would be, um, just down lights inside the actual um, pool. And I believe Julie Dobson was gonna get you specifications on that. If not, I can, I, I can follow up with that as well. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the extent of the project. There's not gonna be any lighting from the house down to the pool. That's a long, that's a far distance. Um, I, I, I don't have any in the plan as of now. Um, you know, I, now that you say that, Donna, I, I you know, we, we're, we're kind of in the, the design development phase of this, but uh, um, a, a few path lights would be, um, would, would probably be helpful just to get down to the terrace down here. But trying to keep it to a minimum, he really kind of wants this to kind of blend into the landscape and, and not really even perceive it from the house. Uh, besides, you know, I, I think a, a few path lights to get you to the to the pool would probably be prudent. And those would be down facing. 
Just a question on the fill. There's 200 yards of fill coming in, but the, the southerly pool wall is elevated to act as the pool fence. Where is all that, that fill going? Is it around the other ends of the pool? Yeah, it's just to kind of blend this grade out um, just so that it's mowable. Um, it is kind of a steep slope in through here. So it's, it, and, and we're imagining that we're not gonna get very much out of this pool because it's everything that's come out of this site as with most sites up on Gear Mountain is just solid rock. So we're not gonna get very much material to blend here. So the, the intention is to kind of, you know, blend this into the existing grades here um, and so, yeah, it'll be mostly just downhill of, uh, of the pool. We still will need it, even if part of the pool is out of ground. Got it. Is there any cutting on the backside of that terrace or is that, is that terrace basically at grade? That's pretty much the, the, the uh, limits of disturbance as far as grading, yes. Okay. It's, it's okay. more or less at grade, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to keep as many trees on this uphill side and minimize any impacts to the, to the vegetation on that uphill side and really set it into kind of that natural hillside landscape, which is really beautiful. Okay. So I'll ask the question, um, you know, same, same types of questions. What's, what's the view, what's the view up that way from Jennings Road and, and Howland Road? It's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm understanding that, that that's the downhill side. So you're looking down and to the, to the southeast from there. So you're looking downhill towards Jennings Road and uh, yeah, the view is pretty phenomenal from up here. Um, you're looking out over the hills, um, over uh, the Guns property, and but uh, there's not really a view up to that property from down below because it's so highly, you know, it's such a knoll that's elevated above the road. So even even as you get further away, so once you drive, where you're driving out Flat Rock Road or driving towards the property from Flat Rock, that looks like a pretty straight a pretty straight view up past those houses onto that hillside. Yeah. I think it goes down. If you're coming from Flat Rock, you're seeing the houses that are on Jennings and they're higher than the houses that are at the bottom or the end of Brown. I think that's right, Donna, yes. And I don't think you're gonna really see anything from Brown either because that driveway is so very long. Yeah, that's a, it's it's a pretty significant oak that they're taking that they're proposing to take down, which makes me you know, makes me a little bit uh, concerned about what it's going to look like when that tree comes down. And where's that tree? Which 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 tree did, are you wanting to take down? It's right here on the corner of the pool, Matt. And it's as big as that hemlock. No, no, I just, I don't show the canopy because uh, we're, we're eliminating it. So I just show this, it's that little X there. No, it's, it's much, it's bigger than the hemlock. The hemlock is about an eight inch hemlock. Um, and this is a 30 inch red oak. Wow. Um, and have you, have you considered Moving that that pool, I mean the topography looks it looks like a pretty a pretty steady grade there, right? Um, have you considered moving it up the hill a little bit to to get away from that that oak where you're not disturbing the roots? Up this direction? Oh no, I'm sorry, down the hill. Down the hill, uh, yeah, we 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 have. Um, it's 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 really kind of a a. a we're trying to preserve that view from the house um, where we're kind of not just, it's, it's a really kind of pristine field as it is now. It's a really nice old farm field that we're trying to preserve. Um, and, and that would kind of really, it, we, it would take a lot of grading within the field rather than kind of black, you know, um, uh, uh, excavating into the hillside here. Um, 
we uh, here we would be downhill we would end up having to fill or excavate uh, quite a bit more on the uphill side and then uh fill on that, that lower side um whereas here we could kind of use the, the the natural rock outcrops as that up, upper retaining and then uh just fill on the downhill side and which would kind of eliminate having to um kind of create a lot of disturbance within the field Yeah, so much. You know, again, my concern is that is that is that big tree, and you're 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 trying to uh, you're trying to enhance or 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 maintain or preserve the view, the the private view, when you might be impacting the public view by doing right. so. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, the 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 hope would be that you know we're 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 kind of tucking this up into the hillside so that that it's not um, kind of a pool sitting out in the middle of the field, um, and 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 kind of minimize clearing um, within the um, you know within the pool site, but um, not make a big disturbance kind of you know within the open meadow. Hi everybody, this is James Lilly uh, dialed in. I was dialed in before, but I couldn't speak. And so I dialed in again. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, when, I, when I was trying to speak earlier is when you, you were talking about the, the red oak, I just, uh, I lost <laughs> the rest of the conversation when I left to dial back in. Did that get resolved? That's what we're talking about now, James. Matt was just uh, expressing his concern about having to remove that that uh, thirty inch oak. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that we we definitely did not want to remove it either. It's a beautiful tree, um, but as Sam is saying, it it, 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 it we, we'd have to really make a lot of changes, uh, and it, there's a lot of other problems with moving it. So. And what I would say about the view, I've, I've tried to find where you can see our house, uh, you know, for the past two years. And there's like a stretch of 10 feet on Ore Mountain Road during the winter time when you can see it. Um, that's really the only place, and I've, I've checked every road, uh, that you can see it. So I am saddened to, to lose the tree, but I am not concerned about the impact to anyone's view. Um, okay. Does anybody still need the, uh, the, 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 the plans up or should we ask I'll Sam? Stop sharing. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, um, any other comments from the, from the commission questions or concerns? Uh, hey. I have a question. I know this sounds crazy, but can this property be seen from route seven ever? I'm not really sure where this is. I, I, I think it's at the tippy end of Brown Road, but uh, can sometimes you see those high mountain places in the winter from, wait a minute, not seven, South Kent, South Kent Road. Just wondering. Not that I've ever been able to. It's just the, the topography of those hills there and, and the positioning of it on the other side of the mountain. The house property is on the top of the mountain, the top of Gear Mountain. And we're kind of nestled down on the side of the mountain, uh, kind of behind to the side of the house residence. And so really there's nowhere to see it except for this, as I said, this 20 foot stretch on Ore Mountain Road. Can you see it from Howland Road? No, when you're on Howland, my father-in-law, Peter Tom, lives on Howland, so I, uh, that, that's why we built the house there to be next to him. Um, pretty significantly down gradient of that, and, and that meadow that is down below James's house is, uh, runs out, it's not, it, it's, it's, not super, it's not very steep, so it, it runs out you know, a ways before it starts to really drop off down to Howland Road. So, uh, so you can't really see up into this prop, this 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 one meadow. I'm trying to look at it from Google Earth, and 
What's the construction road access? Do you have to take trees down to get 12 triaxles back there? No, we don't, Daryl. Um, it's there's an existing construction access that's yep. essentially follows this edge of lawn uh, right to the site. So okay. um, it's it's a fair it's, it's a very straightforward construction access that's been kind of left uh, open so that we can get there. Great. Um, and uh, Jen, what about lighting around the pool, in the pool? Uh, yes, there is going to be lighting, you know, pool lights within the pool. Um, I believe I called them out in the pool specifications. Um, we have three LED lights. Um, and then, um, you know, we, we didn't get into the... Um, into much landscape lighting, which is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll reiterate that James wants to keep it, you know, pretty minimal. Um, it just, you know, just wanted to kind of keep it uh, pretty insignificant out there. But I think, you know, Donna making a good point that we'd want to, you know, see at the most, um, I would say probably five path lights, just down facing path lights, just to get you to that pool terrace. which I'd be happy to follow up with on the plan as, um, uh, as an addendum to this, to, the, to this plan, if it would appease the commission. A any further comments or discussion from the commission? Well, I understand what they're doing design-wise, and it's a shame about the tree, but uh, a tree of that size would affect within a pool with a 50-foot you know, radius. So I can, I can understand that. And, and I think in um, uh, the horizon line, are, aren't we allowed to allow one uh, significant tree being taken down? We we have we have that discretion, Wes. Yes. Um, it, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with it. You know, I, uh, I I I think that I know the applicant has said that they they looked at this a couple of different ways and and have concluded that they that that tree needs to come down. I'm 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 not convinced that there's another way to skin the cat. Um, I also um, you know I I am taking the applicant's. Um, uh, the applicant's comments to heart that said you, you can really only see it from one very specific spot in the, in the dead of winter. Um, I'm not sure that, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the applicant isn't being truthful with us because that's not, that's, that's, I don't mean to give that, give that impression. Um, but I just don't know well enough. And, 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 a, and, a, and a tree of that size, it, it pains me to, uh, approve taking down. Um, so that, that's, does, does this warrant having some, some more eyes go over there and look at it? Honestly, I would like to drive around and see if I can't see it. I I, I don't really have a if, if we if it's not if you can't see it from anywhere, I, I don't it'd be great to keep the tree. We have a lot of trees. Um so if it had to go down, I, I come down, I I can understand that. But if you can see it if that impacts the the view in the horizon line, then I then I think that is a factor. But without driving around and trying to see it, I I don't know how I can make a decision right now. So this the, is uh, this is James again. Um, you're you're welcome to to totally do that. And um, if you find a spot where you can see my house, let me know because <laughs> I've been trying to find it. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that the, the mountain does rise probably 100, maybe 150 feet above that area, and it's all wooded up to the house property. Um, so, you know, this isn't the top of the hill, so you're, you, you'd be replacing sort of green with green behind it. Um, again, I, I want you guys to be comfortable with it, and, and you should totally look, but I just wanted to add that context. 
Great, thanks, James. And I, and and I I I I, I want to say that that Adam's comments are, are well taken. Um, that the that the purpose of the the purpose of the horizon line is to prevent the is is to protect the view shed from the the common roads in town. Um, so if if in fact it's it's not visible from the common roads in town, then then um, within the horizon line conservation district, which we we should feel comfortable approving that. Um, as as design, but I, I I I like that idea, Adam, to take some time to go and drive around, um, and then um, revisit this in a month. Does that sound reasonable? Well, I'd make a motion that we table this for uh, until next month. I'll second that. Okay, thanks, Adam and Wes. And Adam, can we? Uh, um, I'll tr I'll try to get out there, but can we can we rely on you to uh, to Absolutely. make an effort to, to go and look around? I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Go and tomorrow. we have some pictures of the tree and the pool site. If I if I can see it, I will take pictures of it. I I don't actually think I'm gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna go up, or and I'll try to find it. But uh, I know uh, I know. I live right up here, so I, I know the area pretty well, and I, I don't think that it's really going to be visible. And uh, I think it might even be hard pressed to see it in the middle of the winter, but but I'm going to try. Okay. Just one thing to keep in mind when you're scouting is, unlike the last pool, which is set flat in the grade, this pool is going to have four feet of exposure on the south side. So in this scenario, I would say pushing it back into the hillside and into the tree line is actually you know, better than having it project out into the meadow than having to pull all that grading further out into the meadow. So just keep that in mind that, you know, this pool has a different configuration than, than some pools that we look at. Right, it won't, it won't just be flat, you'll actually see it. It's like, a, it, it, it becomes a structure in itself sticking out of the ground. Correct. So you have the backdrop of the hillside trees. So I don't think that one tree is a loss if, if the overall pool envelope is, is pushed within the cloaking of the tree line. Sorry, I'm just looking at the... Uh... I'm, I'm looking at the, 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 the grading lines, to, the topographical lines on here, and these are a two foot increment. So by the time you get up into the level of disturbance, you are um, two, four, six, eight, ten 10 feet up, and the, then the slope continues up. Okay, well, um, if it, there's there's a motion on the table and a second and is there any more discussion and then hearing none i'll call the vote all those in favor so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye aye and motion carries um sam and james thanks for your patience and uh um we'll see you we'll see you in a month thank you commission sounds good we'll see you then <clears throat> Um, okay, so then I will. Um, that gets us to um, our rejiggered. So we have six B one left, six B three, and six B seven in the six series. Um, so let's talk about. I know there's people in the in the in in, in the public who are anxious for us to talk about the uh, the special event at, of six B three. So uh, so let's. I'll go to six B three next. We'll follow up conversation on the special event held at Club Getaway. Um, and this is in response to um, to obviously the event um, of a week and a half ago um, at Club Getaway, where we had a special meeting um, and we approved, we, approved is not the right word, but we allowed a special event on the Club Getaway property 
um, from Friday night into Sunday morning and we put certain conditions on it and the conditions um, in essence weren't met. So that caused um, uh, additional conditions to be imposed for Saturday night and Sunday morning. Um, and the conversation I wanna to have today is, is has to do with what club getaway is um, and how we um, and how we define club getaway and what what their use how we define the use at club getaway so that's why Donna put together the history and you know as you all saw club getaway has been there since the mid 60s um, since prior to the mid 60s um, and um, right now I'd like to know from from the commission's standpoint where how we define what's what's the how do we define the use at Club Getaway now within the within the the rural zone regulations? Um, if I go to those regulations now, Matt, I think one of the problems is we always just defined it as a or considered it a camp and it's it was a camp for adults but a camp but it, it's not really a camp it's it's a it's resort I, I think it and I think David was telling us that it's actually designated as a resort and I, I don't know where in our regulations we have anything regarding a resort um, Club Getaway has been here for a very long time, but we may have to kind of really relook at what it is and create something that makes it something in our regulations. Yeah, and and he, he's they're defined as something by the state, um, which is separate than. So this, they, they have certain requirements and, and approvals from the state to operate in a certain way, which is separate from the, the, the use as defined in our regulations. And I agree with you, Adam, that's, that is that they don't really fit right now with the with our current state of regulations. They don't there. That use doesn't really fit. You can call them a camp, but they serve alcohol um, and <clears throat> they have different. Um, they're, they're operating in a different way than, than, a, than a, a, a day camp or even an overnight camp usually behaves. You know, they have music into the, into the night. They have, you know, they have, they have parties. They have, you know, they're using the lake access. Um, so that's really what I, where I'd like to get to because I don't think they fit in the regulations now. So at the very, at the very least, there are pre-existing non-conforming use. Um, but what we should do is define what they're doing now and not, and, and not, you know, without impunity, without, without saying, you know, you're doing something wrong or you're doing something right. This is what you do. This is how you use the property now. And any change to that use, I think becomes a change of use that they have to come back to us for. Does that make sense to everybody? It does to me. That makes sense. That makes sense to me as well. It's um, it's it's a grandfather, non-conforming, one of a kind, not likely to ever be repeated in Kent again. Um, so I, I would I would suggest that uh, that in Donna's free time, she come up with a with a with a definition of what they're doing. You know, and I, I, I know, I know your history, Donna. That's a, that's a great history. If we can, if we can have a concise, this is what Club Getaway does. This is how they operate. Um, then, when we can go from there. Well, I think I one think, of the things. I'm sorry, Anne. Go ahead. Uh, all I was going to say was, I think we have to consider whether or not they are going to be a music venue. Well, I don't think that that's something that they have always done or until just now. And I think that goes to what Matt was saying, where we have to define what they've been in some way. This is what, this is the way, create something that, that falls within 
who they are now. And when they, if, if they're going to make a change from that, becoming a music venue also, or something like that, that may, that doesn't necessarily fall into, or maybe it does, maybe it doesn't fall into their history. Um, and that's a different way for us to, to look at when those things happen. Can I ask a question back to the use of the word camp? Um, maybe camp is what they have been. You think of the state park down at Lake Waramog. People drive in there and they can play music and grill and, you know, there could be a band there, I guess. I don't know. It's state pro property. But everybody thinks of it as a campsite. You know, you go camping. Yeah, it's a You're campground. Not, it's a campground. So is maybe that's what Club Getaway is a, is a campground. I mean, I, I, I'm asking a question. I have no right. answer. I mean, we've got to have a we've got to have a word for it. Right. Otherwise, how, well, aren't we going down a sl slippery slope that just anybody can create these things if there's no regulation for them? Well, we did have one. I mean, at one point, and I don't know where it got dropped, but. At one point in time, there was resort. And then in two, I think in 2005, that was taken out of the regulations. At least that's what is in the history of, the, of all the regulations that I have. And then what was put in was um, a club. And that's what club getaway actually fell underneath. And then at some point in time, when we rewrote our regulations back whenever that was, we've done them so many times, um, for some reason, that use actually came out of the regulations. Um, and so I, what they had determined was that Club Getaway was a club and that they were allowed to do a baseline of what Mike saw and back in 1983 was a flyer that they had put together. Um, my recommendation would be to actually find out from David what kind of a business plan he has in place because I know there's the intention um, of trying to hook up to the town sewer would then enable him to become a camp where you've got people who are actually staying there for six or four weeks at a clip. Right now, he's not allowed to do that. He can be booked every night, but they have to leave after three or four days. So it's like, you, you can't have the consecutiveness like Ken, Kenmont and Kenwood have at this current time, according to the state. So not according to our regulations, but according to what the state has determined, because there's a criteria that he needs to meet for the state. And that's why he's able to serve alcohol. So I think we need to find out from David what his business plan is so that we can make sure that we have in place what he's going to be. That, that's my recommendation. I think we should also look at what we had in the regs. I mean, I, I have my old regs. I'm sure I have them somewhere. And well, uh, it's in, it's look in at that. There to, so we can see what, so uh, what I think happened is we took something out of our regulations, not thinking about right. where it had a place that it was needed. Right. We looked at it like, well, there is no resort here, but there was a resort. Right. There but that was in 2005, at least 2005. It might have even been before then. Donna, in the history that you did, which was really incredible, um, it was 2003 where Judy Wick talks about uh, I, I guess in a meeting, she talked about it being permitted by special, uh, special, a special permit, and that it was a resort. Right. It was used as a resort. That was the classification, I think, for the special permit. Right. And, and then, then they, then, then that's we, that went away. I guess that went away. So, and yeah, I don't know why. It's possible that the commission at that time, I mean, I, I, I think that predates all of us, right? Um, John the Johnson, probably not. Not Wes. Daryl. 
I think the date was 2003. Been on for a long time. Yeah, yeah, we got to this point before and we asked them to come up with every activity that they do as a baseline so that if they exceeded it, it would then be something that needed to come before us. So we, we got to this point once before where we needed a definition of what was happening there, what was truly grandfathered and what new uses would be, what, what an expansion would be considered. And, and, and the commission at that time might have said that that, that, that use um, it doesn't belong. It doesn't belong as a use um, for future, um, but that that the use as it as it stood could be grandfathered in, and as long as it wasn't, uh, as long as the nonconformity wasn't expanded. Um, so I, I I I think we have our. I think we have um, at least a path forward now that we are going to try to identify, define what club getaway does now. Um, memorialize it as as their baseline, um, and then anything any any uh, anything outside of the ordinary would require a um, a change of use, which would be a which would be a special permit and 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 public hearing and and all of that stuff. And I suggest that I, I think that Donna's idea is great. Rather than rather than foisting the the effort on Donna. Let's start with David. Let's have David put together something first for Donna um, to present to us, and then we can we can massage it, and then that can go in their file that this is what they are. Donna, it should be what they actually do now, not not okay. his business plan that may include a whole lot of stuff that he wants to do one day in the future. That's not that's not what this can be. We have we have a a, a, a non-conforming entity that's grandfathered in, and we should know what they've been doing. This is what they do, and that and I think we have to start there. And anything else is something that gets added on. Well, I don't think that's fair. I think we should have him because we know he's got plans, and I think he has the right to come forward and say, "This is what my plan is." If he's going to sit here and tell us that this is what he plans to do in 15 years from now, then okay, fine. I can understand you're saying that you don't want to have to have that as part of the conversation because everything, especially as we all know now, changes in the blink of an eye. But if he can give us a five-year business plan so that we have some kind of idea of what it is that he's going to be doing and whether he's going to be staying in the same mode that he's in now, or if he's gonna make that big change to become a camp like Ken Mott and Kenwood, then I think we need to know about that so that we don't really have to, maybe we could leave him as non-conforming for the time being until he can fall into the camp category. But I think we need to give him the opportunity to do that. That's not what I'm saying. I, right now, he is not a Ken Mott. He's not no, he's a not. Camp or a sleepaway camp for kids. He had never he, has been. Well, he was he, when it was Camp Lenore. Okay, but, but that's not what he is now. And that's right. not the way he's going to operate it this year and next year and the following year. Right. So he can tell us what his ideas on where he wants it to be, but, but he's going to want to do things this year, next year, and the year after right. that's going to affect our community and that we need to know how to act on that. So I want to know what he's doing now what, how the camp has been operating or the resort, whatever we want to call it, for the last some years. So we know how to go forward. I think we can do both things. I think yeah. that I think that's I, I think that Donna's point is well taken, and I think that Adam's point is well taken too. Let's find out what the baseline is and then find out what his what his aspirations are. And then we can we can understand what he's doing now, and we can we can we can identify whether the aspirations are um, are uh, an expansion of the nonconformity, or whether what he wants to do brings him more in conformance with the regulations. If we if he can be at uh, Kenmont, then and he can follow the rules of the camp, and and then and we can we can eliminate the nonconformity, right? But let's do both things, okay, Donna? Yep, and Kathy's had her hand up, so I don't know if you want to have her speak. Um, I, I, up to I you. don't know that it's appropriate to have the public comment. This isn't a public he hearing. I mean, it's certainly public public meeting, and everybody can can 
um, can listen, but I'm not sure it's appropriate again to have the public comment at this time. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll say that, um, and once again, I love all the guys up at Club Getaway, but I have a big problem with what they did a couple of weeks ago. That was not neighborly at all. Yeah, so I'm going to stop you there, Annie. Um, I know, I know that you've got that opinion. I know there are several people who have that opinion. Um, I, uh, um, I, I, the police were there, and the police made the determination that it wasn't it wasn't a, a disturbance of the peace. So I know that I, I don't live there, and I don't, um, you know, I, I don't live there. I, and I, but I also don't have the, um, I don't have the baggage that comes along with that relationship. So I know that there are two sides of that story, um, and I will, I will leave it at that. Okay. So, anything else from the commission? All right. So I'll see if I can't get um, David to put together um, just a brief explanation or in-depth explanation of what it is that he does now, and then see if I can get him to also provide um, what their goals and aspirations are, um, and then have him come back to the next meeting, and then we can go from there and decide, do we want to put resort back in the regulations? Do we not want to put resort back in? Do we want to put club back in? Do we not want to put club back in? See if we can figure out at least some kind of descriptive use for Club Getaway. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. I just, I just want to ask a question, and it's a little bit of a pushback, but the police said there was no public disturbance. They did, they, that's exactly what they said. Yeah, so the, so, so I, I was there, I was there at, at, at two um, on Sunday and Saturday morning. Um, I actually saw the police go in. I stopped and I listened. Um, I drove. I stopped and got out of the got out of the car. At a couple of right right there at camp at uh, Leonard Pond at the boat slide and um, down by the um, almost down by um, the South Kent School, the old Arno Farm, which is really too far away, and then a little bit further towards. Um, so I stopped and got out. I saw the police there, and it wasn't until the next morning that I, I heard what their um, their determination was. And Don and I were, and Jean and I, and and we're talking on in the middle of the night on Saturday. So yeah, that's that's that that's the report that I got. And uh, was I mean because the police were there and they didn't shut it down, you know. So that was the that was their uh, determination. So I saw the two troopers pulled in there, you know, just before two. Yeah. On Saturday morning. And that was confirmed by Andrew. So by the uh, resident trooper, right? Andrew yep. Fisher? Yep, he was out of town, but um, he was in contact with the um, the desk sergeant um, and was aware of what was going on. And we had just returned from an ambulance call and they came to stop by the firehouse to use the bathroom before they hit them. So they were there. You have to say, <laughs> and that's Gene Speck from the ether. Um, okay, so then, then um, we've got these these couple of uh, um, <laughs> these couple of stepchildren that are hanging out here. Six B one, which is the roles and responsibility of the architecture review board, um, and then six B seven, which is the uh, um, which is the cannabis responsible and equitable regulation of adult cannabis use. It's uh, about ten o'clock, and I know that we have a couple of other things to do, so. If nobody minds, I would look for a motion to um, to table these until the next regular meeting. I make that motion. We if, we, like if, if, I mean, I don't mind moving the ARB, but we're going to need to we're going to need to make a decision about the cannabis. I've been getting phone calls already, um, and I at least need to know from you how. Um, 
we, we need to get this into the regulations. And so I'm going to throw it out there. We can go ahead and table it and have a, a more educated discussion um, at the next meeting. But to think about how you want to handle this, because if we don't put anything in our regulations, then the state will consider it regulated as it normally would, as, as it would something that is similar in use, which is a liquor store. We do not regulate liquor stores, we consider them retail. So that's how it would end up coming in here. So my question was going to be, do we want to just strictly change our definition of retail to say the way that it reads now is not including ammunition and guns and then put cannabis in there for now um, until we figure out what the town wants to do and, and what you guys want to do. At least at this point in time, we have some kind of quasi protection as we decide how we want to move forward and what we want to do with this. Um, like I said, I've gotten, I've gotten contacted already. Property owners have been contacted already about the rental of their properties in order to go ahead and do this. So I, I would like to be able to send something to Mike and ask him if he thinks that would be the best way to handle it for now. How long do we have, Donna? Okay. When, when do we have to, when does the state make the determination that in, in the absence of our action, they um, deem it um, retail slash liquor? Uh, la, 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 la. On or after July 1st, I believe, of 2024. Wait, that's not right. Yeah. They don't, it, it's amazing how they don't even say in here when it can be. I would need to look that up and let you know. They'd have to give us a little time. They only just right. made it. Right. I mean, they have to develop a commission that's going to determine what the criteria is for people who are going to be getting um, licenses in order to do this. You know, right now we only are, because we're less than 25,000 people, um, it's only going to be one retail and one cultivator. Um, there was a question about whether or not we can combine, if, if they could combine towns together to hit that, to go over the 25,000 people. Um, and that is, is um, um, that, is, they, that was answered as a no. So in other words, we can't combine Cornwall, Warren, Sharon, and Sherman to get us up over the 25,000 so that we could have more. Um, it, it's individual towns. Um, and, and Donna, on the cultivator, can the cultivator be a separate entity than the distributor or the retail? Yes. Okay. So a cultivator could sell it, distribute it to a retailer in Kent as well as other cities. Yes. Okay. okay. That's how I understood it. Can you, um, so when we talk about this next month, can we, uh, can you find out what the other towns right around us have, if they've already have a regulation that they've done previously or you know anything like that would would be interesting to know. Well, I know I had gotten from um, OPM just yesterday. Um, <clears throat> and has the COG addressed this at all? Yeah, but they're just telling us, you know, you need to write a regulation. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> with regard to cannabis, the chief zoning official of a municipality shall report in writing any zoning changes adopted by the municipality regarding cannabis establishments pursuant to the subsection to the secretary of the Office of Policy and Management to the department no later than 14 days after this um, after the adoption. So people are now starting to put all that together. There was an article in the newspaper today about the number of towns that have banned it. And um, there was only about eight, I think, that they actually came out and said it. 
I know like Plymouth has banned it and there's nobody around here that I've heard anything of, but um, it's definitely a hot topic on my, um, my planners website. So. Um, Didn't we have a discussion about this some years ago, four or five yeah. years, six years ago, yeah. we had a discussion about cannabis. I, there was somebody from the community who got really upset about it. Rick Levy told us that. Yeah. We and we yeah, have there, there are people that don't want Kent to be known as the go-to place for cannabis. Let's just yeah. get that. And I and I think we should I think that we should be thoughtful um, right. regarding what we want. I just I, I just didn't I, I, I thought that um, tonight was not the night to do that and be thoughtful. And if right. we could have another month to, to to talk about it and gather some information. Right. Um, it's you know Donna's Donna's Don, Donna's ideas is not a bad one is to is to somewhat have an emergency insertion into our definition of retail to exclude cannabis sales for now while we um, while we deliberate um, I don't necessarily think that we shouldn't allow it but I know I know this is going to be a community character discussion and and I think we should get everybody involved and get everybody's opinion and and and. And, and see where that leads us. Right. And it says here, until June 30th of 2024, no municipality shall grant zoning approval for more retailers and Michael, uh, that's that same date. The, um, the thing that Mike, that I sent to you, um, it's, it's part of your packet, um, was something that was, was um, presented um, from, for Casio. So it's something good to read and it just tells you what the facts are um and that kind of thing so uh, in the meantime i i'll keep this on the agenda for next month i will send mike an email and ask him if he thinks that's a viable way um of at least protecting us right now until we figure out what we want to do and you know what they don't even know what they're going to be doing at this point in time like they have no idea mm -hmm. they don't know who's going to get licenses who's not going to get licensing who is going to be the one that's going to make that determination those people aren't even really put into, um, haven't even been created yet. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, so we'll do that. And then, you know, there is a list, which I'm starting, trying to compile. Um, I know, well, you know what, let's, let's, I'll leave that on there. We'll leave the ARB on there as well for next month. Um, okay, so we got that. Can I go into the staff report just for a second? Oh yeah, I, I, I wasn't suggesting that we end the meeting there. I just, I, I know that we had a couple of other things to discuss that were likely going to take more than a few minutes. So right. I wanted to sort of pare down, but we've spoken about 6B7, right? So you've got, you've got some path forward. We've, um, we've tabled, uh, um, the architecture review until next month, and um, um, why don't we let let's go into the, the the let's just follow the agenda along, and we'll 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 give everything due course, but we'll get through them as quickly as we can, right? So, uh, agenda item number eight A is the POCD subcommittee. I know that uh, can we do seven A first? The staff, the staff report seven A. Oh, yeah, no, Donnie, you can't do your staff report. Okay, fine. Seven <laughs> A. Um, I Donnie. just. Um, I received a letter today and based on the way that the meetings are being held now, there's a 24 hour limit. And so I'm taking this letter from Mr. Potter and just kind of putting it in 7A as a staff report. Um, and basically the question about the affordable housing plan, um, we are planning and zoning is not involved with that. There's a separate group. The affordable housing group is the one that's working on that plan. Um, I believe that a resolution was just passed, um, I think, um, Tuesday of this week, um, where they are going to be able to apply for a grant to hire someone to actually write this plan. So um, okay. it could possibly be included in our plan of conservation and development as an attachment, but not as part of the plan itself. Um, and then with regard to all the other changes, um, we do have time to change things. Um, and you had questioned um, the word character and how it comes up um, 32 times in our regulations. 
that, that was an interesting example of the you know some some you know one of the changes. There are a ton of changes in there. For instance, the accessory dwelling units is a big thing that was added, and Kent has the ability to opt out if they want to. Yep. And the attorney was advising that you do that. Um, so I, I was curious as to what the timeline is for making those decisions and doing the revisions, et cetera. Yeah. So the timing for all this stuff is as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But when you start rewriting your regulations, <clears throat> there are certain statutory requirements that I need to follow. Um, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be next month. Um, <laughs> of course. Um, so, you know, it, it will be um, a while before um, we start doing something like that. Um, we will have to have a discussion on accessory dwelling units um, and how we want to handle them. I believe that we should opt out of that. It's just, that's just my belief. We allow accessory dwelling units everywhere within the zones. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing um, that we can opt out of was the parking spaces, which has to do with um, the accessible housing, um, outdoor dining, we're taking care of that as well. We need to change that in our regulations. And then there was wording in here, I had gotten a Federation quarterly newsletter where they talk about changing or taking out the word character um, and reinserting um, like four or five different words um, that would cover the character. So- Physical plate characteristics, et cetera. It's, um, and you know, I was reading this this morning and I saw it and I never highlighted anything. But this is going to be going out to the commission members. Um, so, and, and you're responsible for the rewrite as opposed to it being a, a zoning commission thing that's sort of done collectively with public hearings and whatnot? Yep. Everything would, I mean, we're required according to state statute to have public hearings. I'm required by state statute to notify the adjoining towns. Um, no, I'm required by state statute to notify. Um, the different governmental agencies like the COG, which would be um, in the north for, you know, for the Northwest Hills, but then also for the Southwest Hills, I have to notify them as well. They all have to have 35 days notification um, and they're um, eligible to, um, um, to comment if they, if they feel it's necessary. Um, the term character has now been stricken from zoning law and has been and been replaced with physical site characteristics of the district. So we'll probably go through our regulations and for every 32 of them that we found, we're gonna probably drop those words in there so that we'll be in compliance with the new legislation that's been put in, put in place, but it's a work in progress, so. Yeah, got it. So it just as an administrative matter. So I, I, Darlene Brady's name appears on the documents all the time. So I sent, sent the letter to Darlene Brady on Monday. So they're supposed to go, the, any, uh, communications are supposed to, supposed to go to you? Yes, the, as the land use administrator. The they would all come to got me. It. Yeah. And Darlene okay. never, I don't know, I don't think Darlene ever got it because she never gave it to me. Hmm. Um, and she's usually okay. very, very good about doing something like that. So, um, um, yeah, no, and, and um, my email address is on the town's website, but it's the land use admin at townofkentct.org. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So Donna, this, this, this was the conversation that I, that I thought was going to, was going to take a little bit of time. Um, but, uh, the, our, our attorney is, is, is recommending, is suggesting that we opt out of the, the, uh, accessory dwelling units. Uh, opt opt out of all of those things that he talked to us about that we're, that we can opt out of that we, that we should opt out. Right. Um, and, um, it sounds like we don't have to opt out of those today, but we should be, we should, as a commission, decide whether we want to opt out of those. I mean, most of us were there listening to Mike Ziska. Um, I had to drop off early, but I went back and I listened to the balance of it. And his relatively strong recommendation, as far as I could tell, was that we opt out of everything that we can opt out of. Yes, absolutely. So um, opting out actually means two thirds vote of all of the members. That's what you need in order to opt out. And then it has to go to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Selectmen have to have the two thirds vote in order for the opt out to be complete. So, you know, it's 
I'm going to have to work with Mike on getting all the wording and everything together so that we can figure out how we're going to do all of this. So let's be prepared to talk about that next month with regard to with regard to these these new um, state mandates um, and what we what we should do and what we want to do. That way we can vote on it and uh, and and move on. I, 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 I believe that we should follow the recommendations of our of our attorney. Um, Is there a full list of the ones that we can opt out of somewhere? Yeah, um, I'm going to send out the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies quarterly newsletter. I'll try to scan that in and send it out to you instead of waiting for a month. It's a really good um, layman's explanation of what everything is and what you can opt out of. Um, and, um, and then in the meantime, I'll start working with Mike um, and seeing if we can't, if, you know, if, if that retail change to the definition would be something that would work um, because that would be an easy hit. And we could, you know, we could actually go in there and, and make some of those changes in a quick fashion um and then and then we're done a lot of this stuff is not really going to happen until you know probably let's see we're in 2021 some of this stuff needs to be done by january some of the stuff needs to be done um the following year a couple of years out i won't even be here so my goal is to get is to get all of this done and the regulations up to par and legally sound when i leave um so that the next person that comes in isn't going to be strapped with trying to do all of that as well as learning the job. So um, that's one of my goals. Well, I'm done. Okay. Well, that's that. That's enough for you, Donna. You, do you have enough from us to, to do for, for to answer your questions that uh, you wanted to bring up for your staff report? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. <clears throat> um, um, the agenda item 8A, the POCD subcommittee, we haven't done anything. Um, as of yet, I know I know um, Glenn was in town and driving around and looking at our at our old POCD and refreshing his memory about uh, the town character study. And he and Donna were going to come up with the with some dates for the the subcommittee to meet. Um, hopefully, we can get that first meeting in August um, and then you know start that process. Yeah, I gave him today. Um today or yesterday, a list of contact information for some of the stakeholders um, that he had asked me for. He's going to start making some phone calls and possibly set up some interview times or at least having discussions with some people um, that, you know, would be, would have enough information that would, that would be helpful to him. Um, I'm still working with the siting council, trying to get the information from them. AT&T is pushing back. Um, they don't want to provide me with the information um, that we are requesting, um, saying that they don't need to because they provided that information with the proposed cell tower up on either Bald Hill or on Richards Road. So emails have been going back and forth. Glenn's been guiding me on exactly what the wording should be, making sure that you know we're contacting um, Bachman, who is the head of the siting council. Um, again, she's involved in all this, and maybe she'll be able to push at t to absolutely go ahead and present the information that we need in order to um, provide viable information um, in the plan of conservation and development, which is what we are obligated to do. So we're still kind of working in that time frame, trying to get that stuff all together. Um, but I'll ask Glenn, you know, what he's looking for with regard to an August meeting. Um, you know, I mean, maybe we could try to do something on the 26th, which is two weeks from tonight. I know we were trying to do them like two weeks after our regular meeting. So I'll, I'll see if he's around and then if we, if he is, then we'll get the subcommittee together. Oh, but I'll let you guys know in plenty of time. All right, great. <clears throat> um, okay, so, uh, um, so, uh, 9A is the administrative permits and certificates of compliance. Um, any comments from their commission? I have a question for Donna. Has, um, do we have a new tie yet? No, we do not. Still working on that. I'd like to go to Southbury and actually bring Ty back. But the honeymoon period is over and she's still happy. 
Well, we're working. Um, do we need to go into executive session regarding uh, High Watch or um, the Roberti Family LLC? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. <clears throat> okay, so then um, Justin and Jean, um, thanks for being here. Justin, there's I, I don't know whether there's still a spot on this on the on the subcommittee for the rewrite of the the affordable housing plan for the the board of selectmen, but uh, <laughs> I, I've been emailing with Jean about that. <laughs> okay, all right, good. If you know if you have nothing else to do, <laughs> thank you. You're all Take good. Care. <laughs> so thank I'll you. say good night as well. Okay, be okay, good, Wes. Wes. Is there any reason I would need to stay for after? Come out? Nope. I don't think so, Jean. Okay. Uh, I mean, have... yeah, if, it's, it's, if you want, but you can, when we come out, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll video it. And by tomorrow morning, you can see what we said. Okay. Well, you all have a lovely evening. All right. Thanks, Jean. Yeah. All right, so then um, I uh, look for a motion to enter into executive session and let's do both of them, the pending litigation for High Watch Recovery Center v. the Town of Kent, Planning and Zoning, and pending litigation for the Roberti Family LLC versus the Town of Kent Planning and Zoning Commission. So moved. And I can see Daryl wants to second. 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 <laughs> so, um, so all those in favor, so signify. Uh, motion carries and we are in executive session. All right, I'm gonna pause the uh, recording. Okay. okay, so we're out of executive session. Agenda items 10 and 11 are behind us. We're agenda items 12 and 13. Um, and um, in accordance with the discussion during executive session, um, the commission has agreed um, to follow our attorneys um, uh, recommendations and instructions with regard to both um, open litigation items. I don't think we need a motion for that, right, Donna? That's just a just a comment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put it in as a motion and I basically just say, you know, I, I always blame Adam. Um, move to follow the direction and advice of the Planning and Zoning Commission's attorney. And um, and then and Daryl, you're getting the hit tonight because Mark's not here. So uh, Mr. Chinisky seconded in the motion carried unanimously. So can't have uh, any hits. Cannabis is illegal to sell you. <laughs> I missed it, Daryl. What did what Daryl say? Go ahead, Daryl. <laughs> well, Donna referenced hit, so I just made a comment regarding the cannabis. I wanted to make a joke earlier when she said she was getting a lot of contacts from people regarding it. I wanted to ask her if it was a contact high. So I've been holding all these dad jokes in. I got to let them out. <laughs> all right. So let's all raise our hand that, 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 we, that we voted in the affirmative on that last motion. Um, just because I know that uh, we're being recorded now. Um, all right. So motion carries. And uh, that gets us to the agenda item that we've been looking for. And a motion to adjourn. Oh, I make that motion. Great. Thanks for being patient, everybody. I know that that was that was a lot of uh, that was there was a lot of stuff to get through tonight, um, and it's longer than we usually we usually um, we usually sit. And Annie, I, uh, I I'm sorry if I snapped at you earlier. I, uh, I I didn't mean to be so strident. No worries. We're still friends. <laughs> All right, good. Well, good night, everybody. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in a month. Good night. Okay. Good night, everybody.